Ah, welcome back to Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. I am, as always, Chat Show. How the hell are you? There you are. Hey, um, just back from Denver, I want to thank the folks, the peeps, the tweeps in uh, your Denver, Colorado. What a wonderful time that was at the, uh, at the place there, the Comedy Works. People are so nice. But I didn't realize there were no, I mean, I assumed Trader Joe's wasn't nationwide, but I didn't know it was just California because people in Colorado were, like, really pissed off. We want Trader Joe's. And I said, because you like green bananas, why do you want Trader Joe's? But they're going nuts for it there. Um, and, is that me? Or is that a whisper coming from over my shoulder? <laughs> oh, that was you. I thought, I thought it was the voices come back. No, you didn't take your anti-psychotic. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. Or any other day. Um, so, but then I, I, was, I realized on stage when I was talking about this that I walk around my own house sometimes as Christopher Walken, and I, I complaining about Trader Joe's. This actually happened. Good morning. Edith, I say to the cat, you're looking fine. I see you're wearing your tuxedo again. It's breakfast time. I feel over underdressed. Say, let's have some cereal, shall we? Oh, we got green bananas from Trader Joe's. Hey, Joe, if you're listening, here's an idea. Grow your shit before you sell it. Nutty? So annoying with the green bananas, but they're really pissed off. And the two-buck chuck they were complaining about. We want two-buck chuck. And I said, what is that? And you're saying it's shit wine. <laughs> here's a here's a two dollar. Here's a two dollar bottle. Aren't people delightful? Yeah. Well, you know who to cross off the list then. <laughs> Never again. Uh, so, anyways, thanks, Denver. You were awesome. I was. Mm-hmm. Um, check my. Oh yeah, I wrote myself a note. Check my gig calendar for those of you around the country. I'm touring a little bit. Yeah, West Palm, in the West Palm Beach uh, next weekend. Then we're gonna do New York, Carnegie Hall, in the middle of. April, it's not important. Um, Sammy? Yeah, buddy. You're off to a land known as France. I am indeed. I'm off to Paris this week. You want to drop some cities? Paris. Just Paris. That's all you got? So far. You're the best man in a wedding. Indeed. In Paris. In Gay Paris. Which I decided would be the best name for a gay male porn star. G-A-Y-E-P-A-R-E-E. Gay Paris. Gay Paris. You don't think that exists? Did you Google it? Nope. All right. What about the animated film Gay Purry with the cats? Do you remember that? What? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. That actually happened. Yes. Sure. Now I'm upset. <laughs> now, yeah, see, you went from porn to kitty uh, animation. Um, it was like in the seven, like early 70s, I think. Only you know that. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Now, Sam. Yeah, buddy. Mm-hmm. Um, what best friend gets married in Paris and says, you don't mind coming over and being my best man, do you? Uh, a groom who, uh, was his fiance, her father, who owns uh, property in Paris, said, I thought you were France. He owns France. He owns all of France. He uh-huh. says, hey, if you do it here, I'll pay for it. And the groom went, yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. Uh huh. And so, also keep your friends away. I think they were trying to, but a surprising <laughs> number of us have scraped together enough money to get over there. Uh, I so see. Uh, his plan foiled again. Uh, so you're going to stay there for a week? Yeah, I'll be there for a week with, uh, with my gal, Eve. Uh, and uh, is this her first time in? I believe it is. Paris. I believe it is. What an interesting notion. No, don't. I shouldn't what? suggest. Don't. Something suggest. should take place. <laughs> why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you do that? <laughs> on the air? Do that on the air. <laughs> what an asshole. Because she never watches. That's why. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but people she know does. All right. Well, good luck, Sammy. I hope everything works out for you. In Paris. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Can you tell the French something for me? Um. Let's see. I don't know how to translate that. <laughs> uh, Jamie, how are you enjoying Google or uh, Gmail so far? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. Um, not, I'm, not, I'm not having problems with Gmail. I'm having problems with... With your idiot friends. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's all switch over to Gmail, shall we? Uh, we uh, all, they're not a sponsor. You would think Gmail, uh, the Google peeps, were a sponsor. But no, you know who is? The Bowflex peeps. Yeah. In fact, they got me. That could be louder. They got me to do Christopher uh, uh, Walken on a uh, machine, on a new Bowflex machine that is, uh, it's actually the trifecta of exercise. You've got a, a Stairmaster, an elliptical, and a treadmill, all in one. It's crazy, this thing. If only we had some sort of video we could go to and show you our thanks for their sponsorship. Hello, how are you? I'm here to tell you about Bowflex Tread Climber. Oh, this is exciting stuff. The machine is called the Bowflex 
tread climber. The tread climber combines the motions of a treadmill, a stepper, and an elliptical into one beautiful machine. It's three workouts in one fluid motion. You can't touch it, folks. All you have to do to lose weight is walk. That's it. Wow, walk. Bowflex recommends just 30 minutes three times a week. That's it. Ooh, how great is this? Bowflex did a study at Adelphi University that showed the TRC can burn up to 40% more calories than a stepper, can burn up to two times the calories of a treadmill. Wow, these are two ways to request the treadmill info kit. There are two different ways. What's in the info kit, you ask? I hear you. The full color glossy brochure that describes the tread climber's unique motion three-in-one design, available models, financing offers, etc. Also, a free DVD so you can see it in motion and learn more about the machine. And finally, bonus. Ooh, bonus. We love bonuses. The Bowflex Insider's Guide, which includes a free fitness assessment, six weight loss secrets anyone can use to start losing weight today. Forget yesterday. We're talking about today. Info on nutrition, superfoods, and more. Hey, did I mention it was free? Enjoy your Bowflex Tread Climber today. Like, I will stab you in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, walk with Kevin. Uh, what was the number there? The Bowflex number? Let's put that up there again so I can tell folks who were just uh, listening. 1 800 436 6063. Or go online and, uh, to the Bowflex and type in Walk with Kevin or go to walkwithkevin.com. Look at that. Request online. That number again 1 800 436 6063. Uh, thank you, the fine folks at Bowflex, for your sponsorship. We greatly appreciate it uh, very much. We have a um, uh, we have another uh, opportunity here for you folks watching to be a part of the show. Uh, if you want to write to us at contact at kevinpollockschacho.com. That's contact at kevinpollockschacho.com. I've been scolded for saying contacts 47 times in a row. Uh, to write to us to ask Kevin or your Larry King submissions or anything else, any compliments or uh, crit criticism that you'd like to share with us, we actually do give a good goddamn about what you think and uh, have made adjustments thusly, so please continue. Speaking of Ask Kevin, I believe it's time, if only there was some sort of graphic and song. Ask Kevin. Just about on cue, wasn't it? This person comes from Rick Henderson. He writes, I'm assuming it's a he, bad me. So, as a big fan of the show and owner of a small company, what does sponsorship model look like? Although not from America, what does sponsorship <laughs> model look like? Very proud to be <laughs> What does sponsorship look like? <laughs> I'll tell you, Rick. It looks like this. You write check, I mention them. <laughs> Side mention, we enjoy the show so much I added Gurin Brothers uh, hats to my stepdaughter's wedding. Look at that. The Gordon Brothers peeps. Hey! Oh, we got a little picture. Look at that. Am I wearing one? The whole gang. Did you get your hat oh. for March? This is, I didn't get my hat yet for March. Thanks for reminding me. This is actually a Ted Baker number, but Gordon, Gordon Brothers does uh, sponsor me with some hats. Uh, so your uh, question, the sponsor model is uh, quite simple. Yeah, just uh, again, write to contact the Kevin and let us know what, uh, what kind of, how long of a buy you would like to be uh, involved in. Five weeks, ten weeks, one week, whatever you like. Really, we're kind of open. We like friends of the show. And uh, the rates are a uh, dollar. Just a dollar. <laughs> Ass Face Robot writes, Do you smile just a little bit when you notice that, or did you smile just a little bit when you notice, not only is Albert Brooks on Twitter, but that you are among his initial ten follows? Uh, this happened this morning. I was flying back from Denver. And as I got on the plane, I saw somebody quoted Albert Brooks at, with an at, which meant he was on Twitter officially. And then I went, and he, sure enough, had written, I'm being forced to go on Twitter now by the publisher. I have a new book coming out. This is fun. And uh, then I, was, I wrote to him and said I was psyched about the book. And then he retweeted my thing and said, you better be. You're doing the audio. Um, and it's just so bizarre. We have a connection with today's guest, actually, that we'll go into a little later about the things, the relationships that are 
uh, for in fact, uh, happening because of Twitter, but in fact, I saw Albert then tweeted to Steve Martin at his ad name mm. and said, I know we don't talk in real life, Steve, but you want to be my Twitter buddy? <laughs> and I thought, this is fantastic. And then Steve tweeted him back, and then I went after Steve, and it was hilarious. You can follow this whole long, this whole wonderful uh, exchange all on Twitter now. If you follow all three of you, right? Go read the timelines. Go read it's the timelines. You gotta get him to change his avatar to Hank Scorpio. And then he's got it, yeah, <laughs> Hank Scorpio. So Denver this morning? I was in Denver this morning. Did you have a Denver omelet, or do they just call them omelets there? Wow, I'm sorry. Is this happening? It did. <laughs> it did. We're gonna miss you. I turned into my father <laughs> from four forty-five, three forty-five to three forty-six. Did I tell you I test drove a car that was a picture used in the movie Inception? Oh no! It's a new hybrid. Yeah, actually, it's a car within a car within a car. See? Yeah, we just did those. We're bringing out the best. We just did those. It's really hard if you lose your keys. <laughs> Terrible. This last one is from Marco. Dear Chat Show, I have been a fan of yours since I saw a comedy special where you cast Star Trek with celebrities. I believe Reverend Jim from Taxi was Spock. Anyway, since you do the best Peter Falk and Alan Arkin impersonations out there, have you ever done or would you consider doing a one-man reenactment of scenes from The In-Laws? Would it be hard to switch between the two different voices quickly for an extended period of time? I really enjoy the show and I always get the fuck out of your face. Um, thank you. Good question. Now listen, Shell. The man is very sensitive. He has a scar on his face, so don't say anything. Why would I say anything? That's crazy. I'm not going to say anything. I'm asking you. Don't say a word. I'm not... You tell me not to say anything because the man has a scar, so I'm not going to say anything. A Z? No, I don't think I could. I don't think I could. Awesome. It's only the funniest movie ever. Um... And now we have, that's it for the, uh, for the Ask Cowboy. Well, it was three, yeah. Now we got the Larry King game. We have a, uh, a winner this week. His name is Bob Ritchie. Again, I'm assuming, could be a girl named Bob. Bob Ritchie? I think that's uh, Kid Rock's real name. Do you? I believe it is. Someone get on the Google. Thanks. <laughs> okay, this Larry King game is brought to you by Bob Ritchie. He's got himself a T-shirt. If you want a chance at a Kevin Pollock Shot Show T-shirt, just write in the Larry King game, and if we deem it uh, entertaining enough, we will, in fact, ship you out a damn T-shirt. In fact, Bob Ritchie, please uh, write us again at ke uh, contactkevinpollockshotshow.com. Let us know what shirt size you are. Kid Rock's name is Robert James Ritchie, otherwise known as Bob, Bob Ritchie. Ritchie. There you go. Or Bobby J. Ritchie. <laughs> as he's known to his own. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, so Larry King game from uh, the Bob Ritchie, Kid Rock apparently, fan of the show. It, it goes thusly. I'm reminded of my brief affair with Tony Fields during my third marriage. Large woman. One night I was exploring Fort Bushy and found Milt Kamen's wallet. Hump Tulips, Washington. <laughs> Go. Hump Tulips? Hump Tulips. There's no way that's a real city. Someone look it up in the other room. It's got to be a real city or it doesn't get a t-shirt. <laughs> We don't like cheaters. <laughs> oh, I do not like cheaters. Because intercourse Pennsylvania is a real city. Um, okay, so my first uh, and only guest today uh, w w is a first, I think, in the sense that um, we sort of officially met on Twitter. That is to say, people were yelling at him that he should be on the show. <laughs> I got wind of it because they included my at reply. And now uh, they're telling me that Hump Tulips exists. Congratulations. Todd Richie gets a t-shirt. Get rock. And um, so they're yelling at my guest to come on the show, and I said, hey, leave him alone. And then I DM'd him and said, no, seriously, come on the show. And then he said yes, and, and that was his last mistake. Um, but uh, w the reason that I was uh, uber excited about this is because I had been a, a fan for a long time, but also this whole Internet world as being uh, the fourth career for me has created opportunities and that this show has... Um, been sort of thriving now. Today is our 107th uh, chat. We celebrated our two anniversary uh, two years last Sunday with Lorraine Newman, which was fun and great. Um, but it's all happening because not only um, the sort of viral aspect of, and then I told two people, and they told two people, and then they told two people, but in a sense, I've never had to talk to an agent or manager and a publicist, which, if you know anything about traditional media, show business. That's a fucking miracle. And, uh, and so we were talking off the air, and it, it, he sort of uh, reiterated that it was, in fact, sort of crazy miraculous. And please welcome Mr. Fred Savage. How are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. 
So this happened, right? I didn't make this up. People were yelling at you. You're no, it did. I was thinking about it this morning. I, I'm fairly new to the Twitter right. world. And um, I, uh, this whole thing, I feel like I'm not in control of my life. <laughs> I'm just like a vessel yes. for the Twitterverse to tell me where to go and what to do. Because this, yeah. this thing today was wholly... Uh, proposed, yeah. conceived, yeah. Uh, uh, made made whole by people on Twitter. Yeah. And it did. It started with, I knew about the show. I've had friends who've done the show. And I'd read about it, so I'd watch it on the archives. And the website's great and very easy and great to find things. And I watched uh, you know several episodes before I, I, you know over the past couple years, before I knew I was even coming on. And so I, I knew about the show. And someone said, oh, t- Kevin should, you should go be on Kevin's show. But someone wrote, t- tweeted that to you, yeah. without knowing that you, that you even knew anything about the show. No, right? no. Or you know, why why don't you do Kevin's show? You should do Kevin's show. And you told them to shut up. And I was like, you know, I know who you, t- you know. I mean, I was like, ah, Kevin's got, he doesn't want to be talking to me. And so then I uh, I got a thing from you, <laughs> and I so would you come on? I said absolutely. Yeah. And you're right. It's so nice. Yeah. I mean, making dinner plans with friends is harder going through my wife and all those layers to find, like, sync calendars. Yeah. Then that's harder than, than this was. I mean, it was literally, hey, you want to come on? Sure, when? Yeah. And it didn't Sun- take... You know, a Sunday I'm free. Yeah. And it was, it was so easy. I, it was great. Yeah. And, yeah, no, it, there was no, pa- you know, the, 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 the game of telephone that is right. typical... Yeah, yeah. Show business scheduling. I, I, as you're saying that, I just realized I probably should have gone through the six, well, probably four months at least, four to six months of tweets to try to find who the first person was that yelled at you to come on the show so I could give them thanks here, but damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Good I idea. Could, I could probably find it. Well, certainly. Mine. Maybe someone only, no, they won't. I'm not going to back through six will, months of tweets. will claim credit. But, it sure. was, uh, but I'm, I'm very glad that. Yeah, I, me too. I Listen. browbeaten. To be here, right? Uh, and I feel better. You kind of had no choice. Having done none at some point. No, no, no. I could not uh, anger the the universe out there. Uh, now you got on Twitter. You said about a year ago or so. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, how did how did it begin? A friend, of, uh, Jason Reitman, the director, is a friend of mine. Um, we met our kids go to school together, and so when he was doing um, kind of on the award circuit and doing a lot of press for Up in the Air last year, uh, he was going to so many great you know, places and festivals and award shows and just traveling the country and was tweeting about it. And so... Yeah, he was. I remember because we had him on, I think, a night or two after the Directors Guild Award. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was in that same period that he was tweeting like crazy. He was tweeting like crazy. Which so was an amazing way to get that experience it was vicariously so cool. through yeah. someone in the middle of the eye of the storm. It was, yeah, it was part kind of getting to experience it alongside him and also part just... I kind of wanted to, he was too busy to, you know, so busy to call or email. I just wanted to kind of yeah. see what he was up to. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, it's um, funny, though, because it's true. You know, people are up, up in, with, the, uh, with, the, with the Foursquare now, and it's, you're stalking your friends with this new device, um, this new app. But the same thing goes for Twitter. If someone that you know is out there traveling about and yeah, writing about it. Yeah, you just know what they're up to. Yeah, there's, there's the hundreds of thousands of strangers that are reading what they're doing every day. Right, And then there's true. their actual friends that are going, you knucklehead. Yeah, but I'm, I'm definitely one of the hundreds of thousands of strangers following people I've never met, <laughs> met before. Yeah. But, uh, so, I, you know, I just start, started following him. It was very voyeuristic. And it wasn't until, you know who got me really, who, who got me into it? I was directing a show in Montreal this mm-hmm. summer called Blue Mountain State. It's a show about football, college football. On, on, on Spike on, TV. On, on Spike TV. Not LeVar Burton. No, no, no not LeVar Burton. Um, so uh, she, uh, Denise Richards oh, wow. uh, was guest starring on Winning. one of the episodes. <laughs> exactly. Was, was guest starring one of the episodes I did. And she was talking to me about it. And I was like, I, I, I'm like, no, nah, I, I followed Jason. I don't really. And so she's like, you should do it. And uh, she's got like, you know, two million people sure. followed Denise. Sure. I'm like, wow, that's kind of yeah. amazing. And so um, she got me started. She was the one who was like, hey, uh, you know, send the tweet out, you're welcome. And, and then that started. So it's been, it's, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, the hardest thing is finding out what you want your personality to be. 
you know, on Oh, your on profile? That. Your... No, no, just your tone. Oh, your tone. The tone, the yeah, voice. Yeah, you're, you're right. Because That's a decision you it, need to make early it, on. It is. And I... Are you going to be the squeaky clean version of yourself? Right. Are you going to let people know that you're going to cuss on occasion? I, right. And it took me, you know, am I going to be... There was a time, like, I, I, I was... Uh, I'm a big Chicago Bears fan, and so I like was talking trash during football season. But that I was like, that's not what I want to be. And I'm also kind of like a dark person, <laughs> and so I tried that, and I, that's not what I wanted to be. So I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> you, you tried the dark. Yeah, I tried to like you know I, I you know tweeted something angry. Yeah, I tweeted something angry or off off, off color. I forget it. Now, that's not right. Um, because I follow Jason Biggs, who's hysterical. Is he? And he's hysterical. Huh. And he's totally dark and and really vulgar, but like hysterically funny and and really sharp. Oh, that's cool. Um, so I'm like, I don't want to. I can't be that guy. So I'm trying to figure out tweets about my kids. Seem really <laughs> people really love that. Uh, so I'm trying to do like a combination of like yeah. family man, happy family man, which is true. Um, slash like. Behind the scenes type of thing. So I'll take shots like when I'm shooting, right? And and put them up, um, uh, like kind of like behind the scenes. You know, I'm I direct a lot of television, yeah. so I'm always bouncing around. Every week I'm it's some in some new land, and so um, I try and take behind the scenes shots and share those because I I would like that. You know, I, I think that's kind of a cool look. It absolutely the is. And then you realize also that your voice is also dependent on who your followers are. They actually dictate all of this. Well, I, you know, that's the other thing. Because they're following you in mass because they like you for this. Right. And then if you start being Mr. Dark, well, that's not why I'm following him. Yeah. And so, and, and then I it's try so to be, weird. You try, it's so you, weird. things will happen and like you'll check and you'll lose like a <laughs> couple thousand followers. I'm sure what I do. Oh my God, what, I, what happened? <laughs> Maybe they don't like that show. They up. didn't like that. So like I, I tweeted this thing. Um, I was shooting a, a show that we t it took place, uh, it, was a, it was a big NASCAR tie-in, this episode. And so we went out to the Fontana Speedway on Tuesday, last Tuesday, and shot um, no racing footage, just one car going around. And there's this incredible, it's called, like a, it's called a pursuit vehicle, or a Russian arm, depending oh, right. on what company you get it from. And it's this awesome SUV that's all black with a crane on the roof. Holy shit. Fully articulated arm, it could go 360 degrees around the car, and on the arm is a head that can go 180 degrees and, or 360 degrees. It's amazing. So strictly for shooting purposes. Strictly for shooting purposes. Um, they shoot a lot of car, all car, a lot of car stuff on <laughs> so it. They're not trying to scare the driver. No. <laughs> like the truck is following people around. But it's incredible. I mean, it's really amazing. Ooh, yeah. And so I took a picture of it um, and said, like, how awesome is this? It, and it was a Merce I just thought it was hysterical that it was on a Mercedes. They build them on Mercedes, what? SUVs, MLs, right. or Porsches. Holy shit. And so I'm like, how crazy is this? And did people love it? I, I, I thought people would think it was so cool. I think it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. But I think people thought it was kind of like... You have soccer moms following you. People thought it was like, people just were really, uh, thought it was gross that they were doing it on a Mercedes. I right. guess they thought it was overkill. But there's a reason, you know, the way that things built and because the back is so sheer. Like a lot of the backs taper off on SUVs and the back on the ML is so oh, sheer. Nice. It's easier to mount to. Right. Um, so there are reasons. Um, it, it wasn't just like kind of Hollywood ostentation. It was really just, it was a genuine thing, but people didn't seem to respond to that. Well, like I said, it's kind of weird that they dictate. But then you have to figure out how much tone. you want them to dictate. Like how much is it like, hey, this is for you, uh, I'm doing it. At a certain point, the tail starts wagging the dog, right? Because well, they come and follow you. Yeah, I say in the end, like anything else, uh, actually comes back to life lessons. Yeah. You want to be who you are. And let the chips fall, you know. Even if you end up saying you have tiger blood, yeah. Or yeah, I don't want to be. I don't. I don't. I don't think I want to be that revealing. <laughs> no. So, but but then you're like, well, but this is kind of who I am and what I do, and I guess right. You don't have to follow, but I, I like I like them too. Yeah, of course. So it's like, how much do you respond, or how much do you say like, hey, come on this journey with me? You may not like it initially, but it could be cool. Well, I think the fact that you're experimenting already and that you're aware that what they're saying and responding to actually matters, Yeah. then you decide, all right, well, here's the happy medium. We do like to involve the audience on occasion. Yes, yes. With their questions. Yeah, I know, I, I've, been, I've been added. I've been like included in some of your things, so I, uh, I, oh, I've, yes. I've been, I've been privy to some of these. Let's see what we have uh, here. Hold on. And it was at that moment that it dawned on me. 
<laughs> this was a huge mistake to do this show. It's terrible. What the hell is a podcast anyway? <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> Why did that happen? <laughs> That's not even remotely funny. Oh, you guys! I both? was just getting into it. I was just getting expressive. <laughs> sure, right? really Give me another shot. I didn't. I, it took me a second to catch on. Give me oh. another. What do you got? Questions about Winnie Cooper. Hey, maybe you'll do it as Christopher Walken or Shatner. That'd be great. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> All right, it's oh. working. Danny Stern and you both end up being TV directors as part of the uh, uh, vast careers. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because he mentioned that uh, when I asked him to do those, that you um, both just did Riser. Our paths just crossed. Crazy. Um, I hadn't seen Danny in forever years. Yeah. Year, I mean, fifteen years. Easily. Easily. And so um, I was doing. Paul Riser has a new show that's coming out in a few weeks on NBC, and uh, it was a short order, like six episodes. And when I was prepping, Danny was shooting. And so I, it was just, I hadn't seen him in ages. And, um, yeah, he told me you went out to the, his... Um, oh, he sculpts. I went yeah. to his studio uh, in Culver City. It's amazing. It's amazing, the stuff he does. Yeah, I went to one of the um, sort of uh, gallery... Uh, it's incredible. He's, he does these bronze. I mean, it's, it's the work. These bronzes he does, the work that goes into it. I'm like, how yeah. do you know what I... Yeah, we had, him, we had him on the show, and we showed uh, a bunch of stuff, shots of it, and it's, it's, uh, he's, he's really gifted, not just kind of. No, it's... He's it's extraordinarily gifted. In just, fact, we wanted to get him here live to do those and then walk in and... Oh, should I see? But yeah, is, I, I don't know. see a silhouette out there. I know, but it, it, you would, too. It's hard to miss. He's a, he's big guy. a giant <laughs> Jew. Not <laughs> since Max Baer has there been such a giant yeah. Jew. But he's actually being interviewed by one of the top art journalist is he really? in the country today and that's why he couldn't be here so no, it's good I'm he's just the know-how yeah. on how to do that yeah. first of all and then he's good at it it's, ama good. Uh, it's amazing yeah it's amazing uh, do you have um, wife kids uh, constant work do you have hobbies like that that actually take you away to some magic place no I was instantly envious when I saw him it makes me feel completely <laughs> Empty. No. Yeah. No. Really. We have full lives. So. I, I do, but so does Danny. I mean, I, I work, no, I have a wife, I have gone. kids. Kids are gone. He couldn't be happier to be out oh, in maybe. the Culver City studio. I mean, I, I, I've I started uh, uh, riding a bike, kind of cycling around town. Right. I, I ride, I ride, I commute to work. Um, when, Which is a long way to Montreal. It's a long way. I know. <laughs> I got to leave. Now. Yeah. Right now. Um, so, uh, so I try, I, I try to buy, and then like during the week when I'm not working, I'll, on the weeks I'm not working, I'll ride around town, you know, try to get some exercise. That's a little me time too when you're Yeah, the and so that, like, I've just started to allow myself that indulgence of like, I'll get up early and go on a bike ride for an hour. Right. And, you know, my kids are four and two, um, and for me to, that's, that was, it took a lot for me to like, let myself even do that. And so that's right now kind of, I'm in the, I, I enjoy that. Yeah. Um. But um, as far as like these... It's bizarre, though, when someone finds that kind of a giant second career, like it's, when Martin Mull was here, and he, his art career as I, a painter. I worked with Martin Mull on a show. I was directing a show uh, that he guest starred on, and I was talking to him. I love his art because he actually... I met him. I did a show um, for ABC a few years ago that he guest starred on, so I met him there. We acted together. Was that working? That was Crumbs. Crumbs, right. That was Crumbs. Right, 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 right. right. Um, which I thought was such a great, great. It was really good. It was. Yeah. I think they aired like three episodes. <laughs> yeah, no, but I remember, quickly. and also in the research, we read a whole lot about it and just its inception. And it was. A, I thought it was a really good show, and it was very personal to the writer. It was his whole story, and I, I really thought and it that was soap kind of feel to it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I yeah. thought it was really. The tone was terrific and very dramatic at times. Yeah. And, um, Great cast. A great cast. Jane so Curtin, Martin William came Green. by. So he, directed, so he guest starred on one of the episodes. So we met there, and he made me aware of his art, which I think is fantastic. Oh, and yeah. I've been All following right. it, you know, his, his gallery shows and seeing the work he's doing. Did this last year. We worked together around the time he did this um, show about the seasons. Right. That was really cool, and um, he signed a, a um, what do you call it? a catalog? You know, of his of sure. his show, and uh, it was very very cool. Yeah. Say, but yeah, but another incredible. I don't have that. I don't have that. I, I mean, 
Um, I treat this that this show like. Well, that. you but <laughs> then it, it took over my life. No, but that's, <laughs> this is an incredible thing. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm just trying to get my main thing going, and then I'll well, figure that's just that it. out. Uh, you know, you can only neglect certain things for so long, and I, ma I can't imagine a two and a four year old. Uh, I don't have that life experience uh, by choice, but um, I know that. The, I, I, I sense it when you say to give yourself that hour to get up and go on a bike ride when your kids are that young. I imagine initially there's a tremendous amount of guilt that says, really? Yes. You're not working, you're actually home, yeah. and you're going to go do something for you. Right. You're not working, you're not with the kids, and if you're not working out with the kids, then let my wife, Hello. who's with them all day, let her go yeah. and just like... Where's her bike ride? Right. Right. So... What is what does she do? Does she have a thing? She runs, you know, she, yeah, she runs, she, you know, she... You know, volunteers a lot. She's with the kids all the time. I mean, my kids, they're not in school all day. Right. So she's running my daughter to ballet and my son to taekwondo. And then my daughter, to, you know, she has a class a few days a week. And then my son has sports. Like, it's, I mean, she's running, ev she's running everything that I'm, I'm doing. Like, oh, yeah. my purview is like that. That's why you feel guilty about the bike, right? Yeah. And she does, her purview is everything life. Else. Yeah. Home. Yeah. Kids, right? And me, then, I'm a handful. Well, yeah. So, so, um, but that's like kind of been at least you know now as a dad and working, you know, you have to find some balance of of just allowing yourself that 45 minutes, that hour, like it, like it's great. It's, it's actually pretty uh, mature, quite frankly, to say in the midst of all that hurricane. As opposed to, I got to get out of here, you know, because that's what happens if you don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you but I just, mean? I mean, I just love being, I love being at home. I love well, my yeah, family. Well, yeah, your work takes you away a lot also. Yeah. But let's talk about this. I was um, amazed about the, uh, the auspices of which you met your wife. Uh, you were neighbors as kids? We lived, uh, yeah, <laughs> not too far, like down the street. We're from... We're both from Glencoe, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. Yeah. Woo! And, uh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, same age, and same class? Uh, not, no. A uh, couple years apart. Right. But, um, you know, we knew each other. Our families knew each other. Uh, my, my sister's best friend was her best friend's sister. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of overlap, and our dads worked together briefly. And um, So you we, stayed in contact all this time, or did you actually? No, we didn't. We, we, I moved to L.A., and she stayed in Chicago. And uh, like ten years later, she she moved to LA, and called my parents, and was like, "Hey, it's Jenny Stone. Remember um, me? Uh, they, you know, like hey, Jenny from the block. Yeah, exactly. I'm just, <laughs> she just, you know, she used to have a little. Now she has a lot. <laughs> um, Literally. And uh, and so now, um, so she called my parents and said she was in town, and I got one of those calls from my mom, like, "Do you know who's in town? Oh no." Do you know, she's darling. She is so darling. You remember Jenny? Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, great. Like, that's what I need is like to schlep someone around town. Like, I need to be a tour guide. Like, I'm good. This is Hollywood <laughs> and Vine. Yeah, I know. I know. So Michael Jackson She star. would call me, uh, and I I would call her. I knew she, I would call her back at like 2 in the afternoon when she was like at work. I was sure. such a jerk. And um, she just would like, just wanted to... You know, just know someone here. Like she, she moved out here with some friends. Yeah, weren't you a sweetheart? Yeah, no, I was not very nice at all. <laughs> and so uh, she it's came. Like to my, seven years ago. This was uh, no. We've been married for. It will be seven years this we'll, year. We'll be married seven years. Yeah, yeah, this was like twelve years ago. Oh wow. And so we, um, my parents had her over for dinner, and I came, and <clears throat> we invited. Uh, I was twenty-two at the time, and she. Uh, you know, my parents wanted to set her up and said, what are your parameters? She goes, no one under 30. Like, that is it. Like, that is the youngest. I don't want some young guy, just no one under 30. So I invited her to my 23rd birthday party to meet this guy, and she didn't like him, and we ended up kissing that night, and that was it. I'm in. In. <laughs> um, but before she showed up... And we got engaged in Europe, Sam. Oh, good for you. <laughs> That's good. How long were you together before that happened? Uh, how long have you been together? That was not the question. <laughs> too long. Too long. I, Five I, years. I, I propose. Yeah, we were together. We dated for four years, right. and then I proposed, and then we were engaged for like about a, about eleven months. So we were together probably five years before we got married, which I regret. Was too long. It was too long. 
I should have. I should have got. There's I wish. no. There's no rules. There are no, no, no rules. but for me, I wish I. I mean, I wish I. You wish you had done it. Uh, got engaged in Europe a little earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you don't want to regret that. I guess is what you're saying. I don't think. I don't think you want to look back and say, "Man, like I love my wife so much. I love being married to her." I can't believe I had a chance. I, I could have had it a year early. <laughs> have my girlfriend's parents been talking to you guys? It. I could have had I it. I could have proposed. What the in fuck is going on here? <laughs> it's like the end of Schindler's List. Six <laughs> months. I could have had this trip. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Sorry, Sam. Uh, so, you know. Uh, so, wow. So, so yeah. So 22 now, years old. What the hell do you know, by the way? You can't. You, what, when you saw her mm -hmm. um, at, at dinner at your mom's. Mm -hmm. How long had it been prior to that since you guys had actually seen each other? Like oh, forever? Oh, like ever? 10 years. So she actually didn't really look the same. She was a young woman as opposed to a girl. Yeah, yeah, but it was still Jenny Stone. Right. I mean, she was like really cool. Yeah. Really cool. So when she was at my parents' house, I was like, wow. <laughs> look at this. It's Jenny Stone. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jenny Stone. They could see me now. You know, it was pretty big deal. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> And now you're married with kids. Boom. Nice. Winning. Made, made it happen. Winning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lock it down. Exactly. Lock it down. Lock it down. Central school, students of central school, <laughs> eat your heart out. <laughs> All right, let's really try to include uh, the, uh, the peeps uh, from around the world who are, in fact, watching live. I started to feel desperate. There's no end to this show. How does a podcast end? It could go on forever. And we know Kevin has nothing else to do. <laughs> nice. That is the last one, by Scene. the way. Oh, <laughs> my Scene. God. Scene. Bring Nicely it. done. I'm getting Come warm. On. I'm getting warm. <laughs> Find some more. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. In. The Come challenge on. is on. All right. This, this legitimate question comes from uh, the Twitterverse. Yes, Twitterverse. At uh, capital RM underscore Gomez. Did your experience as a child actor influence your decision to start directing Disney TV and to work with kid actors and share experiences? Well, of course, from doing uh, the research, it seemed fairly obvious, but it was nice to hear you sort of articulate how uh, the importance of a nice and, and easy set and a positive experience for the kids was so damn important and then I liked how you were kind of pinned down as to why other than the obvious you mm -hmm. want everyone to enjoy themselves and then you were that's when you started to relate it to your own experience which mm -hmm. was I'd go to work as a kid and if the director was grumpy i.e. asshole you know kind of took the fun out of it because boy anytime I've ever been around a director who made you not want to be in the sandbox with the other kids Horrible. So I can't imagine actually being a kid. Yeah. No, I mean, it, whether you're a kid or not, I mean, yeah. you're right. You know, you want to set, you want you need to create an environment for everyone to do their best work. You know, not just, and you know, that goes for everyone, yeah. not just the actor. Right. You want the dolly grip to, to be doing his best work right. and the focus puller and the costumer. And for the me, set I'm going to say this focus puller, especially for me. Yeah, that's the hardest job on the set. I need to be in focus. So, you know, you want everyone doing, being able to do their best work. And to do that, particularly for actors, who just so much of it is about putting yourself out there and, you know, being vulnerable. And, and, and um, I have incredible respect, incredible respect for actors. I mean, I'll sit behind the monitors now and be like, man, I'm glad I'm not out there. It's just freaking hard out there in front mm -hmm. of that camera. Mm -hmm. It's hard. And so particularly in comedy, which is what I mostly work in, you want people to be able to, uh, you gotta take big swings, you know, and if you swing big, you know, you miss big too. Mm. And you have to be able to create an environment where it's okay to fall on your face. Absolutely. And it's okay to try. And the more comfortable you are, and the more you feel like, oh, this is a good place, like, oh, I can. Safe. Yeah, it's, it's safe, it's comfortable, it's friendly. Mm. Um, but is that something you learned, uh by observing it as a child actor? Or is that something that someone pulled you aside and said? I feel like you feel it. As a child actor, you feel it, you know? Yeah. And then as you get older, you're able to articulate what that meant and right. why. Right. But as a kid, like, as a kid, you know, it's like anything, any person. Like, you walk into a room, it's a warm room, or it's a, it's a frigid room. Right. And you're, you will react accordingly. And when your whole job is just to act and react, you want to be able to do it in as free a way as possible. Mm. Um, and so, you know, I feel, I feel that responsibility for any kind of actor I work with. But then for young actors, I think the responsibility 
is even more important because you're not just, it's not just their performance. These are young kids who are shaping their views of themselves and the world around them. Where they belong. Yeah, where they belong, how they fit into it. And again, they're, vo they're vulnerable just because they're acting, but even more so because they don't have that sense of self yet. Right. And they're shaping it. Yeah. And I want it to be a really pleasant thing. I want, I want work. I was very lucky, very lucky as a kid that work was always a pleasant place. It was a great place to go. It was warm. It was familial. And not just when I was, you know, on the Wonder Years where you're kind of like, you know, the main guy. So, you know, one would say, well, of course it was there. But every, everywhere. I always had positive experiences. And I think that shaped not only my opinion of, of show business, right. but also of, of myself. You know, I mean, it shapes you. I mean, when you, it's, it's the same as if you go, if your kid's in Little League, you don't want to have like an asshole coach. Um, if someone's going to send their kids to the set, <clears throat> it's important to me right. that they have a good, good experience. Not just as, a direct, as an actor or a director, but as a kid. Right. Um, I know that was important to me when I was a kid. And so I, 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 I take a lot of responsibility in that. It's important to me. And my experience as a kid absolutely shaped that. But, you know... People talk about, oh, child actors, child actors. They're no different than adult actors. I mean, everyone, you know, but, but for well, me, like I take you, particular care. Like you said, they, they haven't realized their self-image at all. No, they're, yeah. They're formulating it, and they probably have more organic insecurity because of it. Yeah. Whereas the uh, adult actor's insecurity comes from paranoia and, and um, job placement and all those other... Uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunate things that get heaped on if you're not careful. But because of that, if a young actor is comfortable, they don't have all that other shit, you know, to work through. It's just comfort or not comfort. So if they're comfortable, right. they'll do amazing work for you. Whereas yeah. an adult actor, if they're even if they're comfortable, they have all that other, you know, all that other stuff going on mm. um, that may stand in the way. But a, a young actor, um, they if they're comfortable. You just can, I mean, you're off to the races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I was asked to do the Peter Falk at the outset. Uh, the Princess Bride experience must have been, I imagine, spectacular, but that's just because I'm a fan of him and the movie and yeah, the, what was. you guys did together. The chemistry between the two of you. Now, when you weren't shooting, was he um, this warm, giving... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and was... Every time I saw him after that, I mean, I, that we did that movie <clears throat> in like 1984, 85. We shot it, so was that 20 more than 25 years ago? Right. And I would see him up until a few years ago. Right. Hey, Freddie, yeah. how are you? <laughs> I mean, he's just yeah. great. And when we did that movie, um, they shot that movie in 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 London and outside and around London. And so because everyone was there, they brought me and Peter there. I mean, that bedroom, we could have shot it anywhere. Cool. But, yeah. but that was where the movie was being done, so they brought us there. And um, I just remember doing it. I just kind of stayed in that bed. I really didn't get out of it. I just kind of hung out there when they were doing new setups because <clears throat> they had a real... Ba the video game I was playing was real, so I just loved sitting in bed playing the video game. <laughs> and he stayed right there with me, talking and... Um, you know, it's very warm, very warm. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll always remember Peter for how warm and open uh, he was to me then. It is now. Yeah. He's really, really great guy. Yeah. Really great guy. Uh, well, you had already done a couple of things by then, um, but was that the first time an acting job had, in fact, taken you to a foreign land? Uh, I had been to Vancouver. <laughs> I say again, was this the first time that they're <laughs> taking you away from the Americas? Vancouver was a very foreign land and, and still remains a foreign land to me. Uh, but uh, yes, that was the first time I had gone. Tell me you've been to Chipinos, by the way, in Vancouver. No, I've not been to Chipinos well, in Vancouver. My friends will look after you. Voted the best uh, Italian restaurant in Vancouver the last, I don't know, 10 years in a row. I will have to go. Yeah, I'm I will sure have you'll to go. be back up there. I was la of... I'm sure I'll be there. I was last there like probably two or three years ago shooting. I was oh. there for like two months. Oh, wow. And um, I, uh, I did not, but I will be sure to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, that was the first time I went abroad for anything. I went with my mom. We took TWA, I remember. Wow. And uh, it was a long flight, and I watched two movies, and 
um, they gave me slippers and a toothbrush, you know, a little pack. You got. <laughs> sure. I remember all these. I was so excited. I just remember being wrecked, like with the time change and. And you're still. There was a bidet in our hotel room. <laughs> of course, you're going to remember that. I, 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 I feel because it's you're all coming back. We went to Madame Tussauds. What are you like, six, seven, eight years old at most? I was probably. I was like nine or ten. We're, well, really? Yeah, oh. yeah. You always played younger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still, right, Sammy? Still holding yeah. on. Yeah, Sammy's still auditioning for teenagers. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> some guy, I was doing a show, uh, and some guy, uh, I was directing this show I was doing a couple weeks ago, and one of the executive producers was casting another pilot. By the way, these monitors are horrible. You look much better. I was looking at my shoes. Uh. They're kind of half on and half off my feet. <laughs> That's all right. I don't really tie them. Stay above the table. Um, uh, so, um, nope, no cowboy. <laughs> so I, uh, <clears throat> he was casting this pilot. I'm like, well, who do you, who are you looking at? He goes, do you still act? I'm like, ah, not really. He's like, well, we need this part. He goes, can you, can you play 30? I'm like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was serious, though. Yeah. He didn't know you were 35. I know. He's like, can you, can you play 30? No, meaning like maybe I was too old. Bastard. Oh, I what? Didn't I didn't get that at all. Neither did I. Then he's a son of a bitch. Then maybe I'm insecure. Maybe I read too much into it. I should take back that fuck you. He was a very important man. <laughs> <laughs> I should maybe have taken that back. Well, we'll send this to him. Yeah, good. <clears throat> um, oh, I can't, I can't believe I buried this lead. Phi Alpha Brother, and now we do the secret Oh, handshake. yes, of course, of course. A true gentleman, <laughs> always, always. I, My uh, brother. Yeah. S A E I was a member of the Sigma Alpha Epsilon Brotherhood at the California Alpha chapter. Yes. At Stanford University. Sorry, I have to push the douchebag alert button on the on the computer here. Well, here we're prime examples of how not all fraternity frat knuckleheads are in fact douchebags. I was kind of a douchebag then. I only lasted nine months in college, and I was down the road at San Jose State University. So I was a bit of a douchebag. But I mean, this was this was uh, a very good ex time. I had a great time in college, and um, at Stanford, you know, there's there's not a lot of you know not a lot of people who want to cut loose and have a good time. So anyone who who wants to do that ends up in some sort of Greek, yeah, and uh, I, organization. Well, that was to me. Yeah, I was just like, what am I doing here? And somebody said, well, you know, if you want to know where the parties are, you just got to go to one of these places. And the next thing I knew was, hey, come on in. What? What's happening? Hey, what? Why am I staring into this candle? Yeah. By right. the way, <laughs> right. during um, I have to ask you about this. I haven't thought of this in God, twenty five years. We can sing violets. Please no. Um, <laughs> but during the, uh, the, the, the no hazing, but that, that week leading up to the initiation, the, these book, the book to study and stuff. And the then, Phoenix. Yeah, all the brothers are, or, or the... Um, My, I, I could be revealing too much. I might get... Well, no, yeah, we got to be careful. But I remember there was such a huge big deal going into the initiation as to what the hell's going to go on in there. Right, kind right. Of thing, all this pressure stuff. And then I read in the book, at no time... Can a pledge be asked to? And then there was a list of things mm -hmm. that everyone was being nervous and scared about. And so I'm like, look, look, you guys, it says right here. The they can't, they can't yeah. do this, they can't do that. And so sure enough, when they got me to stare into the candle in the room, and that's all we'll give away, they started pressuring me. We hear you, you don't think this is, this is real, that we can't uh, do this and that. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I just totally crumbled like that. They, they so broke oh, yeah. me in a matter of seconds. So, I remember being so scared. Yeah. So scared. Oh, God, yes. And for what? I mean, at the time, well, you think there's like the devil's going to come out and say, you can join us now. I mean, you, I don't know what the hell. We lived, we lived, the way it worked at Stanford was you would rush in the spring and then sophomore year, we would we would live in the house as pledges wow. until like we got activated or initiated, which was a couple quarters in. Right. So you were living in the house as a pledge. It and was throwing shit at you and oh, go was, get yeah. me. Oh, they do rollouts. They'd wake you up at three, four, five in the morning with pots and pans, and you have to dress in your outfit and oh, just it was it was it was I was living in fear. <laughs> you must have, <laughs> and they must have especially come after you. Although I did read that you said the whole Kevin Arnold thing lasted about a week. Oh yeah, two at university seconds. before yeah. people were like, "Yeah, whatever, get in line." Yeah, yeah. I mean, but imagine to these members, as you as a pledge, oh, you think you're Hollywood? That must have been thrown at you a little bit, no? I mean, not not really. I mean, I. I guess I'm thinking of Robert Downey Jr. when he went to prison. Yeah, in, 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 in prison was tough. <laughs> yeah, right. Prison was well, yeah. 
But after oh. being a pledge, prison <laughs> yeah. was a cakewalk. Being a bitch is not a problem. Um, but uh, no, at, at college, no one really. Sports was what was cool. Right. If you were an athlete, yeah. like, that was cool. Right. Being an actor was Both. lame. Yeah. So I, I went to college and in a fraternity with a lot of athletes, and that was awesome. And those are the guys they wanted to like, you know, take down a peg or two. But also, this was. University was some of the first real schooling in an institution for you. Oh, yeah. Since your... Yeah, grade school. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was enrolled in a normal, in a, like a regular high school here in L.A. But um, you kept but, working. But I kept working. So I had tutors on set. But all my friends were from school. I didn't hang out with any actors. And right. all my close friends are still from high school. So I would go in and out um, of school when I wasn't working. But, yeah, as far as, like, a sustained, yeah, f like, regular school, that was... Well, back first. during the years, though, of the TV show Wonder Years, mm -hmm. obviously you were not able to have an, any, enough free time at all to go to actual school. At, we, we'd have during, hiatus weeks, and I'd go back into school. Would you really? Yeah, yeah. We, if, if my call... While the show's on the air? Mm -hmm. If I had a noon call... But isn't that when the actual fame of walking around campus would, in fact, be thought of as detrimental in the eyes of the teachers and stuff? Were they just so thrilled that you're there? No, it was very, I never... Really? No, it was very normal. I mean, for, I mean, it was normal. It was the only experience I knew. I used to have to ask the students, but I was not treated well, <laughs> particularly <laughs> right. uh, by anybody. I didn't have more luck with girls. I didn't, uh, you know, I ran for senior class president and lost. Holy so, shit. I mean, Kevin Arnold yeah. lost? Yeah. So senior it was class not... Well, that's because they were staying true to the show because he lost against Becky Slater. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was all scripted. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't know too much uh, Wonder Years trivia. Don't yeah, come Yeah, that's to, true. Don't you come do, over honey. Here. That's all right. But it was all very, like, my experience... How fortunate, though. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. No question. I think so. I mean, you could have literally been treated like a freak. But we never... I mean, we... Yeah, I could have been. And I was lucky that I wasn't. But I never... I, I guess people respond to the way you carry yourself. I was right. never... Right. Like that. I mean, my parents took a great pains and. Um, yeah, kudos to them, by the way, because you and your brother started so young, mm -hmm. your sister for that matter. The fact that they were able to pull this off. I remember once when I was a, when I was a kid, uh, when I was doing the show, we were living in Tarzana, mm -hmm. and we were online at the Man Valley West <laughs> on Ventura Boulevard. I don't even know if yeah. the theater's still there. The Six, the Man Valley, the Man Six. And um, we were online for some movie, and um, the manager, assistant manager, whoever came out and um, was like, "Hey, you know, why don't you guys come on? You know, come on in." And um, you know, just get on the line. And my dad was like, "Well, why?" He's like, "Well, you know, it was, well, I mean, it's not raining, or well, you know, why?" He's like, "Yeah, you know, you, you can come in." And he's like, "No, we're we're good, we're wow. good." Wow. And um, setting the example. Yeah. yeah. And so that's how I was raised. I think I think my parents were very kind of humble uh, anyway, uh, but 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 even more so um, once their son was kind of you know in in the public eye. I think it was really important to them that I grew up normally, and um, I, I I view myself like I tell you I don't view myself as anything very special. Right. <laughs> Not that they took put me down at all. It wasn't like that, but they wouldn't allow me to get. It just wasn't wasn't part of my experience. You right. Know? And so I think people respond to that. I don't think people... I think, uh, yeah, I think you're right. You set the pace. Yeah. Without question. Yeah. If you walk around campus like, do you know who I am, then guess what? You get treated... Like, then you get treated worse. You get treated better and worse. Yeah. You know, people might say, oh, you're an asshole. People might buy into it and say, oh, God, he is really special. Right. You know? But for me, well, I for, walked the middle, so my whole experience was... <laughs> it's interesting <laughs> because I think for a lot of people, a lot of big stars I've worked with, not a lot, but some big stars I've worked with, uh, didn't have that. Uh, support from their parents mm -hmm. and consequently are screaming from the mountaintop. Do you know, you, you realize who you're talking to? Yeah, I... They I, suffer from that. And anyways, I just thought your parents did... Amazing. I mean, they're... Truly amazing. And, and with, with a lot stacked against... I mean, a lot stacked against them. Yeah, against and by the way, lot. no great shakes uh, really for your mom if she's spending the most of the time with you when you're doing the show. If she's... Like you said, she got to go to Europe, of course, mm -hmm. London, to do Princess Bride. But 
if she, you know, whichever, whoever is looking after you on a daily basis, it's not the greatest no. thing in the world at all. I mean, no, you deal with these parents all the time as a director, and I, I've, I've read where you sort of consider them to be partners in a sense yeah. in terms of getting what you need from their children. Um, so it must be weird for you then to sometimes meet parents who are the opposite of yours, that are those stage parents that are... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. Because it, I, I you can't relate to them from no, a personal level. I've worked with kids who you know just don't want to be there, you know? Right. And it's a terrible feeling for me because I feel like I'm subjecting them to something they don't want to be doing. Yeah. And um, you can just feel it from the kids when they don't want to be there. And it makes me feel awful. So what do you say to the parents at that point? I, what am I going to say? I'm like, I mean, they're there. The kids are there. I've got a scene to shoot or a show to do. So, you know, I didn't drag them in there. We all have something to do. So I try and make it as pleasant as Obviously possible. Obviously, we're talking about your work on That's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Charlie Day's mother was just like, you're going you're gonna to do this. You're going to do this. Don't embarrass me. Um, but uh, you, you have to get, I mean, you have to get through it. You know, we all, we, we have to get the work done. So you try to make it as pleasant as possible. When there are kids who just, I, you just, they don't, you can feel it. They yeah. don't want to be there. You just feel like you're subjugating them to this thing that they... I would imagine you're going out of your way at that point to make the experience as enjoyable for them as You're well. trying to, but, yeah. you know. You also have to get your work done. Yeah. And you're also shooting for television, which means you have less time. Than you have you less know. time, and, and, and at, some, at a certain yeah. point, you want to just Take get them out of there. Yeah. You know, just like, well, let's get it done. Let's just rip off the Band-Aid and, you know... But it's hard. It's hard. It, my heart, I feel very close, you know, very connected to these young actors, you know, right. um, who are working now and who worked before. It's a, it's a strange, yeah. odd bond that I, 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 I feel we all share. So I, I, it breaks my heart when they're unhappy or, or when they run into trouble or, you know, just, I just hate it. But also in the same way that you want to please your parents as a kid, there's a sense of wanting to please the director, too. So if you're putting out that sort of empathy, I imagine they're feeling it as well, which is a good thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe. Sometimes. Sometimes not. You need to believe it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fred, uh, weren't you prepping an episode of That's So Raven while I was shooting one? Is that memory? I did, a couple, I did direct a couple episodes of That's So Raven. I believe you did. Mm -hmm. I believe you did. Mm -hmm. That was the highlight of that week. Yes, I did. <laughs> I shot that. I went, hey, I can say hi to Fred. I did. I directed two episodes. Uh, yeah. An episode called A Fish Called Raven, mm. where she was the mascot of the school, which was a fish. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Klein was the guest star. Yes, one. that's right. And it was uh, <laughs> not John Cleese's best work that episode. <laughs> no. I will be frank. What's all this then? Yeah. Um, yeah, but yes, I did. I did do that. Now, I mentioned uh, It's Always it. Sunny off the cuff, but the truth of the matter is I am uber curious how um, the transition was from the not-so-adult fair mm -hmm. that you started with and continue to do to doing one of the most subversive shows on television, which we're insane fans of, Yeah, truly. And you've done a shit ton of them at yeah. this point to the point where you're listed as one of the producers. I did three episodes. I directed um, episodes, uh, or seasons uh, three, four, and five. I did half of the episodes of those uh, three seasons. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, kind of like... Tell me how you got the first foot in the door, though. You know, I, you know I've been directing a lot of episodic television. Um, mm -hmm. to answer, to, it was a long time since that your um, RM underscore something asked, but... but I think because I was a young a actor as a child, I gravitated towards working in these you know younger sure. uh, shows. But also, when uh, you have no credits as a director, I feel like people need to take a leap of faith on you. Yeah. And the people that were willing to do that were people from the children's space because they said, well, he could work with young actors because he right. was a young actor. So it was kind of a natural segue. So. That's where I started, and then after doing that for a lot of years, I built up a lot of credits. With great success. Yeah. Let's be clear. Well, by the way, have more awards. <laughs> Are you kidding me with this? Uh, Three DGA awards. Well, yes. Nom well, yes, nothing. Nominations. Nominations. But, uh, but, uh, but, it's... Uh, but flattered, nevertheless. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I, um, so I uh, started working in some more, like, you know, network stuff, you know, an episode here, an episode there, starting to build, you know, trying to segue out. And then this sunny thing came, and 
you know, kind of like my Twitter personality. I have a lot of personalities, you know? Apparently. And I have the family friendly, you know, family man side. Mm -hmm. Then I also have this darker side. And I uh, was a huge fan of Always Sunny. And um, I, uh, they were meeting people to direct their third season. And Is this something your agent brings to your attention or you found out on your own? It was a little after? bit of an agent thing, but it was also a lot of mutual, a lot of weird mutual friends things happened. Where I knew people who knew them, and Rob um, was, was like a huge Wonder Years fan. Perfect. Like huge. Perfect. And so I think he wanted to meet me just to meet, to like meet me maybe. Sure. But I was really a big fan of the show, and I think that, you know, clearly something clicked in the meeting, and they're like, yeah, I want you to come do some. And that went great, and they brought me back the next year and the next year, and I became one of their regular guys, and I just loved it. I loved it. And that, and that really opened up a huge... That changes everything. It was, yeah, total, total game changer. I mean, I owe, I, owe, I owe a lot to those guys because they were the ones that really kind of opened up this whole world of more sophisticated comedy, you know, and, and, and edgier comedy. Had you done much single camera at that point? Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, I start, you know, most of the stuff, I mean... Um, no, Boy Meets World. That was, that was a multi-show. That was multi. But a lot of the stuff I was doing at Nick and Disney at the time were... were a lot of single camera stuff, which is what I wanted to be doing. Right. Um, my very earliest stuff was multi, but at that point you're just trying to get any any credit at all. So um, so I had been doing single camera for a while, so I was comfortable with the, with the format. Um, but the subject matter was just great, and I just I loved it, and 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 just totally immersed myself in it. And you know, it exposed you to all these great writers and actors and these kind of more subversive stuff and that carry that you know that carries on in my work now and and you know uh, if that hadn't happened I did party down for two years right which was an awesome experience a show that people just really really small but very very dedicated fan base people oh, God, love yes. party down yeah. and that was all you know that was all because of that sunny thing I mean it was I owe those guys a lot yeah well work always begets work if if you deliver yeah so it's one thing to get the opportunity but damn you, you had to be really good at it. Yeah, I mean, those guys are, are you, know, they, you know, they created the show, they write the show, they produce the show, they star in the show, and it's very personal to them. And so... The inmates are definitely running the asylum. They are, but running the shit out of it. Yeah, and they are. so, you know, they're, and, and they're also not, like, they don't do anyone any favors. So if did they you bring did, you back... Did I read you did the Christmas special? Is that the one where Danny comes out of the yeah. couch? Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck, dude. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dude, we gotta talk about this. That was my... How do you not... Yeah. ruin every take by laughing when he's greased up and comes out of that couch, couch. I th that was so great I mean that was my last <laughs> episode I did for them oh and God. that was like my 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 swan song my yeah oh my, my magnum God. opus over at the <laughs> Always Sunny was that hour Christmas episode holy fuck uh, but it was when we made I mean I left that day and this doesn't often happen um, but I left that day but yeah we did something that was pretty special. Like that was something we'll remember, you know? <laughs> yeah. Was there any part of you at one point that went, holy fuck, Danny's really going to do this? He's, oh, Danny's game for anything. Danny's up for anything. Yeah, Danny's yeah. the best. So uh, there was no squirmishness. There was no... Oh, no, let's just grease it up. Let's go. Yeah. More grease. More grease. <laughs> uh, he was just awesome. Yeah. He was great. He but, really is a fearless son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. Completely. And Even him on Twitter. Do you follow his I do, antics I do. with his feet? The troll foot? I do. I follow, I, follow the, I follow the troll foot all over the world. Yeah. But, um, but that was... I, 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 I always think, like, you know, you look at great films or even great television shows, great moments, you know? And, and you know, at some point, you know, um, you know, Michael Curtis, when he shot, you know, We'll Always Have Paris, went home and was like, yeah, I, like, I did that that day. I shot Bogart saying that, like... That's what we did. That was what I did today. Like, what'd you do, honey? Yeah. You know, like, I made this, like, like I, this was incredible. Yeah. And so I always think about these great moments in film or, or TV where, you know, you come home and, like, that's what you did that day. It, this iconic thing. You shot thing. greased up Danny DeVito yeah, so out of the I'd couch. Yeah, so I'd home being like, yeah, I did that. Like, that's something pretty awesome. <laughs> like, that's what I did today. Uh, oh, so yeah. So I was, I, yeah, that was a great, great moment. I like that, doing that. Pretty goddamn sweet. All right, let's bring him back in. 
We got a tweet five. Are you familiar with those? Q Dave Keckner. Team five. Team five. Did you work with this lunatic? Team five. I have. Oh my God. How, what did you work with Dave Keckner on? Keckner guest starred on um, Party Down. Oh, nice. But he was very, very under, very underused. He, he, we, we cast him. I did an episode about a corporate retreat that um, the gang was catering. And he was one of the kind of corporate guys there. One of the jerks? Yeah, one of the jerks. But he, we brought him on for like a couple of scenes. And it just wasn't, we just. You could tell he had more in him. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just did, the, the part, there was, n you could tell him wanting to sink his teeth into it and get something done. There was no, yeah. there was nothing to, no, nothing to grab onto. I, it was a. It, I sense that you still feel bad about it. I do, I do, I do. The, the thing I hate the most, I really hate, I don't care how far behind we are, I don't care how many hours of overtime or how much a producer is glaring at me, if an actor isn't happy with a take or a performance or a scene, I, will, I won't move on. Like, I, 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 I hate leaving an actor. Like I said, that vulnerability thing. Like, I want them to leave being like, I fucking nailed it. You know, like, boom. And, and also to know that the director has their back. Yeah. Is a huge thing. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to move on unless they're happy. And I, I know, I, I left, and I know Keckner was like, he wanted to do more with it. And, and I wanted, like, there was just nothing there to grab onto. You know, there was no, there was no toehold. So I worked with him, but I feel like I didn't get, I didn't get the full, right. I didn't get, you know, the full experience just because that part was, well, was it just means you'll have to cast him again. Yeah. Oh, I will. I'm a huge fan of his. He's yeah, amazing. Us too. And, us and uh, he's crazy amazing. I um, I want to get the chance to work with him again and give him something he can really sink his teeth into. Get him on the phone. Um. So the tweet five is a rapid fire five questions. This or that. Coke or Pepsi. No wrong answer. Go. But they are designed specifically for you by the viewer to trick me. Acid wash jeans. Parachute pants. Parachute pants. Swatch, watch, slap swatch, band. Watch. Or slap band. Swatch it. We're done? Absolutely. There's no other choice. Vans or Chuck Taylors? Chuck Taylors. Izod OP shirts? Izod. Fraggles or Smurfs? Fraggles. Wow, it's a perfect world. Yeah. Those are all correct answers. Thank you, yes. <laughs> I, I, I prepared for this. Nicely done. <clears throat> Smurfs I did not like. It was 90 minutes, that cartoon when I was a kid. It lasted forever. So you can't wait to see the movie, you're saying? That's, that's the answer I was looking for. Uh, this one comes from the chat room from Corey underscore L. Could that be our very own Levine? I think his name is pronounced Levin. I looked, at you. I looked at you when I said his name and it came out Levine. <laughs> How dare you. Corey Levin. What was the fan response to your scene-stealing performance in the underrated film Rules of Attraction? And what was it like playing a character so contrary to audience expectations? Yes, indeed. That was in your dossier. Let's get to it. Yes. Uh, that was uh, this. I mean, I, I I don't even know how I came to be involved with that. Well, I, that's the first thing we need to know. Yeah, I, I I think I just went and auditioned for it. Whose idea? I think I had an, like I had a feature, a new feature agent who was like trying to get me to do like cool different stuff. Stretch it, Fred. Yeah. You got to stretch, stretch it. Stretch it. And, and you read the script and you go, oh fuck, this is stretching it. Yeah, I'm like, let's go. Why not? Let's do it. And I um, I remember I watched all these like druggy movies and tried to like find some. Stuff to do, touch mannerisms. Your, touch your face. Yeah, just and so the audition was 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 cool and and um, and then I got the job. It was not very sexy. You go to audition and you try and get it, and I got it. And I mean, I was in and out of there in like a few hours. But I remember I really wanted to like, I, I, you know, I'm not like a method actor at all, so I was sober when I was doing it. But like, I really tried to get like this headspace, and I remember really, I don't remember a lot from the morning because I was really trying to get this like. Headspace, um, and it was great. Like I, I don't do that. A lot. I mean, I, the the stuff I do doesn't call for me to like totally like go somewhere else. But 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 this did, and I and I could I kind of went there in my head, and and um, you know he started throwing you know Roger Avery is like this mad kind of genius, and and he uh, was start just started throwing stuff at me and. Started improving a little bit. And it was really cool. I really, it was a really great experience. You loved it. I loved it. Yeah. And uh, I was playing clarinet at the time, so that was my clarinet that I, I brought because I was like, 
It was, it was, it was scripted. I asked you earlier if you had hobbies, and you failed to mention the clarinet. The clarinet. The clarinet. That was Speaking a hobby. Of That's sexy. less of a hobby and more of a, of a, a shameful secret. I, I really love I really enjoyed block? it. Self-cock block? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to have myself really sexy. And I was like, chicks love the clarinet players. Uh -huh. um, Woody Allen. Yeah, there you go. Come on. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I played that in like fifth grade in, in grade school. You had to like pick an instrument, and I really liked it. And so when I was, I was I, well, not working, I had quite a bit of downtime for mm. a couple of years, and I was like, oh, I'll pick up the clarinet again. So anyway, the script called for me to pick up a guitar and strum a guitar, but I don't really play guitar, and I feel like that's so kind of, people have seen that, you know? So I brought about my clarinet. About the junkie who plays the clarinet? Yeah, so I brought the clarinet, and I'm like, Hey Roger, what do you think about this clarinet? He's like, oh yeah, totally. <laughs> so, uh, so that was Ro you know Roger allowed me to, to use that, and um, I don't know. I, I had this line where he's like, hey, uh, tell her you can tell me you can um, feel it in your dick. Tell add, add that. Can, do, would you mind saying? He was kind of embarrassed. He's like, would you mind saying like, I can feel it in my dick? I'm like, yeah, all right, sure. And so <laughs> that kind of became the, the catchphrase. Um, but it was, I, I, I was in and out of there in like a few hours, and I had a great time, and I thought the movie was awesome, and, and I'm very proud of that, just because it was so different. And, you have to be. And, and people still talk about it. I mean... Clearly. I mean, it was literally like three hours one day, and it's still like people are talk about it and ask me about it, and I think that's cool. Well, yeah. Bob Saget is the same thing. He was the cleanest guy in the world. He has one line in Half Baked. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where he says, you ever suck Coke for dick? Mm -hmm. Or, or, or just the other way around? Right. You know yeah. what I mean? People still, he's like, I'm walking on the street with my daughters. People shout that at, at me from cars. It's the one thing <laughs> yeah. that follows him the rest that's of his fun. life. So once you go bad, that's it. You're screwed. Back. Well, that's the saying. And mm. also, I have sucked you've Coke been, for dick, <laughs> by the way. I've been horribly misquoting <laughs> it. I've been horribly so misquoting it. Bad. 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 I thought it was Jew. Oh. <laughs> once you go Jew. Uh, we got you another. Uh, mention that the uh, the tweet five from earlier was fr you didn't mention who it was from. Who sent it in? Did I not? No. Oh, all those five were from the same person. Oh or yeah, was compiled. At, no, that was at Cockamamie. Right. <laughs> oh, that wasn't compiled. They, these one person will put together all five questions. There was a very clear theme, and yes. I thought Cockamamie did a great job. Didn't she? And I feel like I hope I, you know, fulfilled your expectations. As well, to if what. you answer within a couple of seconds on each one, that means she did an amazing job, and you were... Very right. clear. Yeah. Very clear. Well, let's try it again, then. Okay, another, go. Another two I really five. like these. All right. Team five. <laughs> team five. Just gotta wait for Keck. Team five. See, we're underusing him, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is what's from at hey underscore it's underscore JC. All right, JC. A very, uh... He bathed in my uh, swimming pool. He literally bathed in our pool. All the way from, uh... Was it D.C.? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. The other one was from D.C. Yes. Um, the Wizard or Little Monsters? Oh, boy. That is a tough. That is tough. Sophie's Choice. Someone, <sighs> someone's got to die. Boy, I might, I, boy, that's a tough one. I don't know. I don't know if I can answer. That's the correct answer. I, don't, I can't answer. That's the correct I answer. I can't answer. This will be easier. Acting or directing? Directing. Damon or Nightman? Oh, uh, boy, I would say uh, <laughs> Dayman. Yeah, he's the fighter of the Nightman. Yes. Charlie Day or He's the master of karate. Yes, hello. For everyone, so I, definitely Dayman. <laughs> definitely. Charlie Day or Charlie Kelly? Day. Winnie Cooper or Waitress? Winnie Cooper. What are we talking about? I don't Come even on, know. It's a slam dunk. Yeah. Um, Charlie Day. Oh, my. Where do we start? Just the most incredible, infectious... Has he done the show? You you're should get the guys to come do this. You're show. actually going to help make that happen. Yeah. yeah. In fact, we're going to kind of get you to commit to it right now <laughs> the on, guys are on camera. Yeah. We're sick fans. Yeah. And have, that's the thing. Because I refuse to deal with an agent, publicist, or manager, I wait for moments like this. Just waiting. So we are going to talk about Fine. this afterwards. They're yeah. great. So They're give, great. Me a little, um, give me a little Charlie Day because um, how much improvising is going on? Obviously, I know they write the shit out of it, but. They write from their own improvisations. So, you know, they'll have an idea for the show, but the dialogue, they kind of write from their own improv right. as they kind of workshop a scene. So once we get to set, it's pretty, you know, they know what they want to do. They've kind of right. explored kind of what that scene can be. So they can nail it and you can move on. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, if they find something that kind of makes them laugh or if they find something that's funny. Because that seems to happen. 
They, oh, they, yeah. they genuinely make each other laugh. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, and so, um, you know, I think what you see on the, what you, the final product of the show, I would say is probably like 85% scripted. But there's only like 10 or 15% of the show that they find there. And is there a meter of any kind on the set that if his voice gets too high, Someone says you gotta. Oh no, gold. That's the gold. You try and you try and it's like you know the bell at the at the carnival. You try and you try and ring it, <laughs> ring it. It is fantastic when he gets up there. No, they're. I mean, they're they're the three of them. They do a lot of things really really well, but one of the things they do, I, I'm really impressed with, is they can be so present in a scene, but also so self aware. Right. You know about what's too far and what's not. And also within the context of an episode, where you know where they are and how, when to be big and when to be small, and we're shooting seven episodes at a time, crossboarding all of them. Holy shit! So they can still keep it in their head. So now, so one episode isn't all shrill. Right. You know, they're they're, they're able to kind of modulate it, and it's That's an, amazing. An incredible. Yeah, it's an incredible. Speak to that just a little bit have. because I, I don't imagine more than four percent of anyone watching is going to know what that actually means that you just said seven episodes. So what we'll do is... Um, for location purposes? For location purposes and scheduling and budget, it keeps it, you know, we'll shoot, we'll shoot seven episodes in five weeks, but so in, in 20 days. And to, have, to be that far or, ahead, script-wise. Yeah, in 25 days, yeah. They right. have to have all the scripts written before the season, which they do, they bust their asses to get that done. Because that never happens. Uh, no, we, most shows can't do it because they don't have the scripts. Right. But they, they have all the scripts done, and um, they'll take those seven episodes and we'll, we'll schedule them, you know, so... Um, You'll shoot a, p a piece... We'll do all the bar stuff first, usually. From any of the seven shows, if not all of them. You try... If for the bar stuff, you can try and keep continuity, you know? So we'll do... Today will be episode 104, or, or 304, and then episode 307. You try and do that. And then, you know, if you go into Charlie's apartment, instead of coming in and out of Charlie's apartment, you'll do all the stuff in Charlie's apartment for a few days. And then you go to the, guy, the guy's apartment, do all the stuff there. And then you go on location, and that's what really gets bananas. Because then you'll find a location, so you need to find a TV studio, you know. But there's just maybe one scene here. So the TV studio, like across the street, has got to be a donut shop that we could use. And then, like, a couple blocks down has got to be something we could use. So, you know, you're, you're using, like, four or five or six locations in a small area trying to maximize your, your day. And how much of it is shot? On location. In Philadelphia. Oh, in Philly? Uh, you go for just a couple days? Or? We go, at the end of every year, we go for about two weeks. Two so weeks. we'll prep for a week and shoot for a week. And um, they're really good about uh, carving out at least one or two scenes from every episode right. to really give it a sense of place. Yeah, they, they're amazing. And I think they succeed in they're it. They're amazing and, at that. And some episodes are scripted, have to be in Philly. Like I did an episode, um, my last season there, Road Trip, where they went all over Philly and... Um, they never left. Yeah, they never left Philly. <laughs> but we shot in a lot of Philly locations. We shot a lot of it in L.A., but there was some stuff that had to be in Philly. It was very ri written, it's very Philly-specific. But then there, were, there are other episodes where you'll sit and say, like, God, well, what, is there anything here we could put in Philly? Like, what could we pull out and put it in Philly? Um, so we try and be very conscious about at least placing one or two scenes every, of, of every show in Philadelphia. You weren't involved in Philadelphia, though, were you? Philadelphia, I was not. That was after I left. That part was great. Holy I shit. love it. That, that's a fun part about, about um, I mean, I miss the guys. I miss the show. I love doing it. But I can be a fan again, right. you know? Yeah. So I can really, you watch it very differently. Um, you can just enjoy it. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about that for a second. How, how, uh, is, what is your ability like to watch your own work after the fact, after it's done, it's been handed in, it's now being broadcast? Are you... Your objectivity, your enjoyment level, what, what, what's that process like? It's terrible. <laughs> because it's you terrible. can't stop. You, no, you can't stop. You know, you just, you're still ah, I could have done, ah, shit, you know, and ah, that could have been, I could have done that different. And right. It's terrible. It's terrible. Um, there's some surprise, because as an <clears throat> episodic director, you, um, you'll shoot the show, and then you'll get uh, what they call uh, an editor's cut or an editor's assembly. And your editor will have gone through all your footage and kind of put something together. And then you go in as the episodic director for two days and you get to work with the editor 
and reassemble the footage and, and select the takes you want and the cutting patterns you want and the shots that you want. Um, and sometimes you hand it over, and then, and then you hand it over, and then, and then the producers get it. The showrunner. And the showrunner gets it, and they edit it, and then they address the network notes or studio notes, and you kind of you know, don't, don't see it again. And so when you watch it on television, there is a, 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 some discovery, which, which is nice. Mm -hmm. you know? You'll say, oh, God, they, they, um, oh, they put that back in, or oh, they took that out because of time. And um, you know, there are some episodes where you're like, God, I hope they don't. You know, mess with this one part, and then, but then there are other parts that you watch and be like, "Oh God, that was great! I would have never cut it together that way." Like that's they just did it so so well. So there is a process of just rediscovering it that's nice, right? But um, so I do enjoy that. But at the same time, um, it's just yeah, you just see all the, you know, that's just my maybe that's just my personality. I just see all the, all the wrong. I all the mistakes all the, that yeah. you, you think you made in your own mind. Yeah. Or yeah. you run out of time or whatever. Run out of time was. and all that. Regrets. Uh, Nothing know. but regrets. And how are you at so called killing babies in the editing room? You know, I, again, because I'm, you know, not the final, um, I, I, I don't have to deliver it to time. Fred, when you directed a feature. Right. Well, I don't, so I don't have to, yeah, I don't have to deliver it to time. That's the hardest thing. Right. So when you have to cut, you know, I can, you know, I, I'll ask some producers want me to cut it down to time, um, and for me, you know, it, it's it's a lot of times you'll watch a show and you're like, that's kind of extraneous, you know, mm. um, or that didn't work, or that wasn't that funny. But you know, I I uh, I don't have to do a lot of those time cuts, which I would imagine is very difficult. But you know, it, it, now with 21 minute episodes, 21:30, most of them deliver at. Um, Holy crap! There's not a lot of you know, you don't have a lot of, it's just story, 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 story. Yeah. And the hardest thing, you have to fight for jokes because the jokes don't move the story, but they're funny. Right. And so, you know, you have 21 and a half minutes to tell, depending on the show, two or three stories with a beginning, middle, and an end. So it's what about when, when you did, uh, when you do make the move to directing features and mm. you suddenly have a different kind of responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though Final Cut is one of the hardest things in the world to get to. Um, no question, all the experience you had on television leading up to mm -hmm. it and being able to shoot on those tighter budgets. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, the freedoms that come with time and a smaller page count are one issue. But what about this greater responsibility? I'm getting a sense you probably thrive in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I don't shirk from the responsibility. I mean, I think that when you go, when you, as a director... Um, I mean, you know, when you found out you had... Cuba Gooding Jr., you probably shit yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, Honestly. Yeah, amazing. He's another one we have to get on this show. He's, the, he's I've great. I've known forever. He did a, a one scene in uh, Snow Dogs. A Few Good Men, and he was... Oh, yeah, right. He was he's, fantastic. He was extraordinary. So memorable. Yeah. Um, but he was... He, he's just so... A, a, a great comedic presence as a person. He's a great guy. And well, I think Jerry Maguire may have been one of the few times that it was truly captured in the sense of his... That's him. Oh my God. That's him. He's bigger than life. Yeah. He's bigger than life. So when you found out you got him, you're crazy. And In fact, I believe he was on board just prior to them signing you. Yes. Right. Yes. So you find this out, you're thrilled beyond belief. Beyond belief. Beyond belief. Crazy. Yeah. But now you have to cast the rest of the movie. With, uh, with the kids. Yeah. But that, I, I, I enjoyed that. I liked casting those kids. Um, you know, I feel like casting is very much, you know, it's like kind of falling in love. Like, you know when you know. And your first instinct is usually pretty, pretty right. And what about when a role doesn't find the right person and you don't know because... You know, that happens too. You run and, out of time. And then you just got to get the, the person you think is going to be the best to work with, you know? The best audition isn't always the, the determining factor when you're casting someone because... I'm thrilled to hear that because I think you'd have to agree having been on both sides of it now. People the can have a bad day. The auditioning process by design... Is brutal. ...is designed to fail in my opinion mm -hmm. because the emotion you want from your actor on set is the antithesis of the emotion that they usually bring into the room mm -hmm. simply because don't have the job, have the job. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Yeah. Insecure got the job. These are to totally different personality traits. Right. Two different people. Two different people. You know, you know, got the call at noon to be in, you know, be at, you know, 
at Warner Brothers at 5 p.m. on a Friday, and you're fighting traffic, and you got to get someone to watch the kids, and you come in, and, you know, and auditioning is just brutal. Someone's on the phone, and someone's talking loud in the hallway, and it's just, a, it's a terrible... I often wonder sometimes when I hear that people like um, uh, Redford, Eastwood for sure, always insist on putting actors on tape, doesn't actually want to really be there ever, mm -hmm. if it's partly because... If he's in the room, that changes things, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm casting a pilot right now. I'm, I'm casting a pilot that I'm going to shoot for NBC in a few weeks. How's my part? You're going to be fantastic. Okay. And me? <laughs> Sammy. I'm sorry. If, he, if Kevin's unavailable. You're the younger me. I think if you, Kevin's unavailable. You, you passed. You didn't respond to the material. Oh, I think you're right. It was that one. Right. That's Terrible what decision. I'm doing. I need to fire my people. You didn't like uh, your people passed. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so you're in the casting. Process. So you know, so you know, you see these auditions, and it's it's just it's a tough. It's a, it's the good thing about it is, you know, you want that. That's the, the fallacy about auditioning. Which I when I was auditioning, I was like, oh, they just hate you. You know, they just want you, they just they're oh, no. staring at. Like you want everyone to be great. You know, you want to be blown away. You do. Like you want casting is so hard, and you want everyone who comes to me like. Be the guy. Like, be please, that one. Please. Like, make our dream. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Like, yeah. I want to love you. And I feel like there's a lot of people who, there is, a, there is a very, it can be a very hostile process. And you know the actors are coming with their dukes up, you know? And um, it is. It's, it's a tough process. It's not the best way to judge. It's certainly not the best way to judge um, You're not going to get talent. the same person no. in the room that you are in the set. It's just not possible. So you know you, you kind of do it and you see if the one thing I like to do is if, if I think notes, let them do it again exactly yeah. like you want to I always want to give someone a note uh, you know they come in a room you see they can you know sometimes you're just seeing if they can put a couple words together you know because there are people coming to audition who just don't have that so you're looking for just basic skill uh, and talent and then beyond that I always try and give a note see how they take a note or how they respond to a note whether or not it's Better for the scene is not. It's kind of not important to me at that point. Right. If I know they can, if I know they can act, I just want to see how they take a note. Um, because on set, that's a very real thing you have to do very quickly is Absolutely. to take and incorporate a note in your performance. So I, I always try and give a note, um, and and you know they're in and out. I mean you have to you go through a lot of people. So uh, so it's not always you know you, you know to get back to what you're saying like time's ticking. It shoots on Tuesday. You need someone. You just sometimes you roll the dice, and sometimes it, it, you come up gangbusters, and other times it's not so great. But is this uh, how new are you to actually um, directing pilots for the big big uh, pants networks? I did a I did my first big I done pilots for <clears throat> the cable networks, Disney Channel, right. Nickelodeon, things like that. But I did my first big pants network uh, pilot last year. That's huge. It was awesome. We had a. We had a great. It was I mean, people don't. I don't think have any appreciation whatsoever for what it actually means for a television director to get a shot at directing the pilot, because it's night and day. It's, oh yeah, yeah. It's not just the paycheck in perpetuity, but you're putting a stamp on the original formation of the story. Yeah, and you're really crafting something from the ground up. You're designing the sets. You're and designing the showrunners, you're casting it. You're the showrunners have got a their greenlit pilot. It's been cast. Uh, they've been working on it forever. Th not only that, but early on in the process, they kind of have a larger list to choose from of directors, and that list only includes people who've directed successful pilots because yeah. they want the good luck oh, yeah. from the guy who already hit the Grand Slam. And particularly now, you know, now more than ever, because pilots can be, can be so lucrative, there's a you know, ton of feature guys. It just speaks volumes to what you've accomplished. I just want to point that out. Sorry if it's embarrassing. Oh. But it's <laughs> impossible... An impossible world to break into is my understanding to direct a, a network pilot. I mean, nearly impossible. Because, like I said, they just want the best already. You know? No? Yeah. I seem to recall reading for you for this pilot, and you did not give me any notes. I, in fact, you interrupted <laughs> me in the middle of my read and said, "Thanks for coming." Oh, it was very. I was. I could. You, there was so much. Too much talent. good. Mm. Too much good. How long mm. could you stand directly in the sun's rays? <laughs> There, you, know, you have it. I was getting burned. Wow. And I had to shield myself. <laughs> and you didn't offer me the part because you were afraid of getting burned on a daily basis. Yes! How, yes, Sammy! What are you going to realize? Now I get it. How could I responsibly have exposed that was harder, the crew, the crew to I, that much 
radiation. It was harder for De Niro. It was harder for De Niro. Don't you understand? Because he was so, so good. good. It all makes sense now. Uh, this this uh, tweet five comes to you from at dollar yo. Yeah. Team five. Team five. Team five. I hope this oh, this one's easier. That one. That last one I didn't like as much. Okay. It was the, the other one. The previous one was so specific. Oh, they're coming at you. I already see bulls, bears, bears, Culkins, Baldwin's, Culkins. Actor, director, director, producer. Director, producer. Ringo Starr, Martin Starr. Martin Starr. <laughs> Princess Bride, Willow. Princess Bride. <laughs> They're fucking with me. <laughs> They're fucking with me on that one. Um, that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> right, right? Yeah. So, uh, I'm giving Marty well, somebody's a shout got out. A, somebody's got a party down uh, question. This is from at Stu Mark. Was party down more of a directorial challenge than Modern Family or similarly traditional TV shows? Uh, no, actually, they were both similarly non-traditional. Yeah. Um, but but similar in that respect. Uh, Party Down um, was a show that I was brought on to. They uh, the the guy the four guys uh, Rob Thomas John um, John Enbaum uh, Dan Etheridge and Paul Rudd who created it. They shot a pilot at Rob's house in his backyard. Yeah, in his backyard and driveway and kitchen and th they shot this pilot. And um, I came in, uh, they sold the show based on that pilot, but then they were going to reshoot it for, for air. So I came in to reshoot, they were looking for directors to come in and, and reshoot the pilot and kind of you know, stay on with the show. And so coming off of Philly, I kind of brought that sensibility to it in terms of the production. In, in the pilot of, that they shot of Party Down, it was shot very like a traditional TV show on dollies, it was very nicely composed with steady frames, and <clears throat> it all looked very nice. Uh, and there was one moment in the pilot that they shot, which was also in the pilot that we reshot, where the, the, the host of the party gives one of the caterers um, a video camera, and handheld camera, and said, can you shoot some of the party? And so she does. And for that moment in their pilot, they shot it handheld. And you kind of moved through the crowd and got like a snippet of that conversation and a snippet of that conversation. A yeah, and it was all just zingers. It was all just hysterical stuff. And when I met with them, I was like, you know, that that was the funniest part of the pilot for me because it felt so spontaneous. And I I said to them, if I were to come do this, I'd want the whole show to feel that way. I want the whole show to feel like it was unfolding in front of you and to put the audience as a fly on the wall and that we were glimpsing these moments, you know, that you were just happen to catch them talking in the kitchen and you happen to grab this conversation and that the whole party's happening around you and the camera's just kind of moving through it, you know? And so that's what we did. Yeah, hell yeah. And so we, um, I, from Sunny, we were always cross-shooting on Sunny. So, so as opposed to, like if we were having a conversation in traditional shooting, I know you know this, but the audience. Sure, sure. Uh, we'd have a camera on you or sometimes two cameras, a wide size and a tight size. And then we would turn around and relight and put the cameras on me, which is great. It works very well. But for the guy in the comedy that the guys were doing at Sunny, when they were finding it and discovering it, if, if, if you do something that's like genius and inspired, you're not going to be able to duplicate it on, on the other side. So it's, it's lost in, in the yeah. ether. So you know, they were like, if we, we want to own it. If we, if we come up with a bit, like, we want to own it. You know, I want you to always be crossing, you know, ABC. And uh, so that was kind of drilled into me. And so on Sunny, on, on Party Down, we got this phenomenal cast, just like dream, dream com comic cast. It was crazy. It was amazing. Um, I brought that same thing. So with that handheld style came the cross shooting. So we were always cross shooting. And then as a director, you feel like you put a, not only a stamp on the show, but helped shape the creative pace and the look I think of the it show. helped the show. Yeah, I mean, I think the show. Is, is I think it really made the show great. I mean, I look at that other pilot, and I, I hope they put it, I don't know if they did or not. I, I, I know that season two DVD came out, um, and I wonder if they put that original pilot on there, because it, it would have been, been a great exercise to kind of see where the show started, you know, mm -hmm. um, and what they were able to do in like two days in Rob's house to kind of launch this show. Um, so in terms of directing, you know, you're always cross-shooting, so your challenges are kind of the geometry of a scene. How to make it, how to use a space 
and figure out how the cameras are going to see each other, but not make it feel like it's static. And um, that, that's kind of the challenge as far as your staging and, and where you put your cameras. So um, Modern Family, that's how he shot Party Down. Modern Family, um, you have more freedom than you did on those shows because you're... Um, the documentary style of Modern Family, you can al you're always working the, the zoom. So you're in, you're out, you're seeing so much more. Um, and, the, and, and the documentary style also allows you to you know, whip over and you know, get something and bring them over to you. At it's Sunny, that felt a little too stylized. We didn't do a lot of that. You know, like if we wanted someone to enter a door, I'd either stage you near the door or I'd cross you over to that stool and as you went over to the stool, I'd pick up that person coming in the door. It was more organic. And, and same with Party Down to some extent. We used whip pans a little bit. But on, on Modern Family, it's even looser. Mm. You can just, if someone's talking, you go grab them. It can be totally disconnected to the scene, and then you can bring the camera back. And also on, on Sunny and Party Down, I would do a wide and a tighter pass. Or try and get some tight coverage and some loose coverage, depending on what we needed for the scene. On Modern Family, there's none of that. If you want to be close on a line, you go in for the line and you come back out. And, and how is so, that for editing? Very freeing. You know, you don't have to. The perform. You don't have to build the perform. The performance. You have to get the performances there. There's no building performance. You know, there's no. Well, this will play better in a close up. Like it's all got to play well, all the time. But, and then in terms of pacing, where editing is uh, your best friend. Well, you got to get it on set. And that cast. I mean, that Modern Family cast. Boy, man, I just did that show a few weeks ago. They are just, at this, just at this point, forget it. Just amazing. I mean, boom, 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 boom. The kids, the the, the kids are amazing. The adults are obviously fantastic. I mean, there's no. They don't need help pacing a scene. They really don't. I mean, um, you, you try and get some pieces. Maybe you try and get some clean. Uh, not not all tons of overs. Maybe you get one pass that but might be a little point, cleaner. At this point, you have an instinct about stuff like that. Yeah, when you have shooting, an instinct where you think like, "Here's well, an area I may need to help a little bit later." Yeah, yeah. You know, I did a thing with it with it. We the the episode. Um, there's a dog in the episode. Um, I know a lot of there's a lot of chat rooms about that show. So I want to be careful. I don't divulge too much and get in trouble. There's a dog. I can say that. Sam, again. you want to tell us about reading for the dog? Sam. It didn't was, go well. I'll tell you. <laughs> it didn't go well. You can only shine so bright as a dog. You can only shine so bright. How many times do I have to say this? And the not fixed. Tone it down. He was so wild. You he can't commit a 10 every time. My method. You got to get a fixed dog <laughs> because they're just too crazy. And Sam was unwilling to neuter himself. Again, it grew back the first time and yeah. I felt like the luckiest guy it, in the world. It didn't take. The neutering didn't take. He's that much, man. Tell okay. Him. Remember when I said that I, I'll say to a guest, can you believe that we've been talking for 100 minutes? No way. Really? I have to go? <laughs> no! Oh. <laughs> I just want to make sure you I've know... I've nowhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first guest. Took 107. We broke one. Broke one. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, okay. There, uh, uh, I, I did want to ask, actually, about... Um, uh, when, when you uh, were making the transition to uh, directing, and then uh, also I think, weren't you in uh, university when the working yeah. pilot came about? Uh -huh. So I want to know about that real sort of life experience for uh, some people out there. You know, there's, you talk about trying to find a hobby now when you're still trying to maintain a career. So here you are trying to uh, accomplish a very important personal goal, mm -hmm. which is to graduate from Stanford, which you're not taking lightly, I can only assume, mm -hmm. based, based on the last 98 minutes. Um, and show business is calling, saying, yeah, no, we understand. And your agent doesn't get it. Your agent's right. never, you can tell your agent 50 times, I really am serious about school. And he says, no, no, I understand you are. And I, I am completely supportive of that, Brett. I can't wait to be there for your graduation, which I would bet dollars to donuts they were not. <laughs> I can't wait to beat your graduation. They were not there. No, of course not. Mm -mm. But we love you here. And this is an amazing opportunity. And I think you kind of need to at least read the script. You know what? Let me just send the script. Right, right. In between the homework, just take a look. Yeah. Yeah. And then you read the script and you go, fuck. Yeah. I kind of need to go do this. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was kind of how exactly how it went. <laughs> really? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's right. Because uh, way to ruin the story, I Kevin. Mean, the, no, personal, the personal focus to actually not just say I'm going to university, mm. but I'm going to that level of university, and I'm going to do this not in six years, because if I keep going back to TV, it's going to be six, seven yeah. years. Yeah. Well, I I did. I was there for three years. And then working came along, so it was my junior year, and they said, you know, come and do, just do the pilot. And, you know, I, I had, you know, kind of was doing my, doing, doing university, doing, doing well, kind of really immersed in that world. How well, as a student? How were you doing? I mean, not so well at the beginning. <laughs> but how could you? Because I was thinking it's I a, such so a well different mind skill. And I also, was so excited to be like a kid, like normal, and I just drank a lot and I smoked a lot of pot and I just was like a total knucklehead. Right. Um, but then I then I, I was like, oh, this is like real. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I got it, got it, got it now. And so then I kind of buckled down. So I did well. I did well at school. Um, but I... Um, so by the time you are a junior, you are doing quite well. Yeah, so by the time I was a junior, I kind of had the, had the drill down and you know, my kind of my life established on campus. And, and so this came along. And in my head, I knew I wanted to go back and do that. And so this opportunity came along which they don't come along all the time, and it was NBC when it was like, you know, you know must-see TV, and it was, it was, it was, it was oh, a heyday, heyday, Warren Littlefield and the whole thing. And 1999? This was 90, uh, this was 97. 97. And so, um, so I was like, yeah, sure, okay. And so I, I went and did the pilot, and it was great, and it got picked up, and, you know, Stanford um, is very encouraging of its students to go do whatever, you know what I mean? I had friends. Well, not literally, whatever. Well, I had friends who would, who went to far more noble work than <laughs> doing a sitcom, but who were medical students and went to, you know, Tanzania to study a bug that would cure tuberculosis. This is where you're wrong, Fred. Uh -huh. That's not more noble. They, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, than prime time. Yeah, this is, not yeah, to, that's not, to, not to rain on their parade, but I'm pretty sure we still have tuberculosis. So yeah, nice job true. on yeah, them. Way to fuck that up. Yeah. So, so good job. Nothing. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, that was not time well spent, clearly. Uh, but, uh, so they are encouraging of that. You so know? they said, if you need to take a year off? Uh, I, w I went, I went, I, I left, let's see, my senior, so got, shot out my junior year. My senior, it was picking my senior year, so I was gone for uh, fall and winter term, and I came back for spring term. And then um, I went back for a second spring to finish, or uh, I guess my fifth spring right. to finish. Um, and then I then I was done. So I mean, it took me one extra quarter, but um, but I mean, I I, I was happy. I, I loved the experience. I loved doing the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it got me kind of. It was a big deal for me because it kind of got me back in the saddle. You know, I was I hadn't worked in a while. I mean, the one years was had been over for for four years, and I hadn't worked a lot. You start wondering, oh God, am I ever gonna do that again? And then that's when I started, I directed my first episode of television on Working, right. that second season. And um, and that kind of got the ball rolling. So that was a real seminal job for me. I mean, it got me kind of back in back in back in action. Was it before you went off to Stanford that the bug was in your mind about directing? Oh, from way yeah, way before. You Since were picking up on it when you were on Wonder Years. Oh was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. From just an absolute and genuine curiosity level, it was, or the did the career of a director somehow. It was a curiosity level. Okay. I loved the camera and the lenses and, I mean, this doesn't happen anymore, but the, the mechanics of loading film and the gate and how the camera worked. And um, I was always so curious. You know, that in episodic television, there's different directors coming through the show all the time. And I would always find it so interesting as to why a director would do shoot the kitchen one way and another director would shoot the kitchen another way and why. And why would a, a two-page scene you could do it in one shot, where sometimes a half-page scene would take all day. You know, why, what are those creative choices? Why? You know, and and um, I was just so interested in it. You know, I was so interested in it. And I think at the same time, there was also an element of like just the kid thing of you know, it was hard work. You know, when I was a kid, and I just remember like sitting there, and the director would be like, "Again, like, all right, one more time, all right, again." I would sit, I would sit at the camera like, "You motherfucker!" Like sitting back there, like. I'm killing myself out here, man. I want to sit back there and say again. <laughs> there was a little element of that. Uh, but I've also read that you 
uh, um, made a point early on when you started directing that you were never going to be the kind that would bark orders from, no. the, from the monitors. No, I hated that. Yeah. Never. I, I, you know, people who work with me for the first time learn pretty quickly that to not stand between me and the set because I'm in and out of my chair, like in the middle of takes, like running in and out, and mm. I feel like what I have to tell the actor is nobody's business other than the actors. Um, I think even if you're doing a show for a, you know, I mean, you're doing, you're not doing it in front of a live audience, but even if it's just the crew, there's still that element of surprise that you want your performance to be surprising. And you want to feel an ownership of that performance. At least I believe that's what actors, that's what I felt as an actor. And I think actors feel that way. Mm. And so, you know, you want that element of surprise in your performance. And also you don't want to be a, you don't want to be anyone's puppet. So there's someone, you, know, you don't want to be there like, faster, be happier, sadder. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, all right, okay, I'll do that, I guess. You want it to be a, a relationship and a conversation between you and the actor well, that you remind respects me. them and their choices, you know. Absolutely. You remind me, uh, we were talking about Gene Hackman a little bit yeah. before we went on. Yeah. Um, because the there's a famous story, it might be apocryphal, that he worked with a first time director in the last 10 years or so who was in over his head day one mm -hmm. and had embarrassed either himself and Gene or just Gene. Right. And Gene pulled him aside and said, faster, slower, louder, softer. Those are the only four words I want to hear from you the rest of the shoot. Mm. Have you had any, in your giving and nurturing and loving and creating a wonderful place, has there still been someone from the acting world, I don't, we don't need names, oh, I just yeah. mean as a personal experience where their own insecurities, their own demons meant that it became a pissing contest and they needed you to know that. I'm glad you're here, Fred, but this, you know, this is, this is our show, especially as episodic director. I yeah. don't think it had to have happened. I, I, there was one story, it wasn't a pissing contest as much. This was like, welcome to directing. It was my, one of my first, I directed my show, I directed my brother's show, and then I started directing other shows. Right. And so it was my first single camera experience. It was a big deal for me. I mean, I, I, I of course. you know, I, I, it was a huge opportunity. And I was shooting this show and this actress was uh, late. And it was a kid's show, it was for Disney Channel. And, you know, kids, you know, some, when you're shooting a show, you try and shoot it a certain amount of hours. But if you go long, you go long and they roll their eyes and over time and it's expensive. But on a kid's show, there's no going long. Like the child labor laws, like when they turn into a pumpkin, that's it, shut down, walk away. So right. if you don't get it, it's not in the show. So we're waiting for this actress and, you know, we're waiting and it's not coming and not coming. I'm like, ah, like, it's my first day. I'm like, I really gotta make this day. And so I asked, to, the, the guy who played the dad was there. And so I went out to the producer, I was like, look, I said, is it possible, maybe it's a quick scene, can we have dad just take the mom lines and you know, let's, I just want to get it shot. Like, yeah, yeah, good idea. Let's, we got to keep, we got to keep the train moving. Let's and by go, the way, go. what you just uh, uh, shared is something that happens every day, several times a day, where you have to improvise because of the. You got to improvise. Yes, you got to. Especially with the child labor laws. Involved. Yes, you, you got to get there. Yeah, absolutely. You got to do it. The train does not stop. And so we're getting ready, and then the actress shows up, and she's like, "What's happening? What's going on?" And I'm like, "Look, I'm like so sorry. You know, just we we I got to make the day, and you know." I don't, I don't know if you were given the wrong call. I didn't want to say, tell her she was late. I'm like, maybe you were given the wrong call time. I'm not sure, but... That's not passive aggressive at all. You know, we got to get this done. And so uh, she's like, you, you gave him my lines? You gave him my lines? I'm like, yeah. She goes, I said, I, we had to make the day. I'm sorry. She goes, we don't make your day by fucking me. <laughs> and, then, and then she stormed off. And I was like, part of me was horrified, but another part was like, that's... Showbiz, man. Like I love that shit. What a like, mouth on that Hannah Montana. Yeah, I say, God, you don't make your name by fucking me. And 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 then part of me was like, I mean, it was like a short scene. It's just Disney. Like, how bad did I fuck you, really? <laughs> like, did I fuck you that hard? Yeah. I don't think so. It was a gentle slide. I think I barely kissed you. Yeah, yeah. So so um, I I uh, I but I sometimes I love that shit. Yeah. You know, like. There's stuff about show business that's t it's hard and tough, but I also love it. I mean, it was like five or six years ago where someone finally was like, 
we're never going to work with you again. And I was like, God damn, it's about time someone told that to me. Like, I feel like I've been in this business way too long. Like, you'll never work here again. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've arrived. I want, yeah, exactly. Like, I want that shit. Give it to me. I love it. I'm finally in show business. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, yeah, you feel like you're in show business. Like, until someone tells you, like, gets in your, I just feel like you haven't done it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I've worked there since. Sure. But, but, but just, I love that, I don't know. Yeah, you feel like there's certain things you want to have happen, and right. maybe you feel like I was in show business. Oh, that is fine. I love that story. Yeah. You don't make your day by, by fucking... fucking me. <laughs> uh, it was great. Hey, it's another T5. Go. Another Tweet 5. T5. From T5. T5. Does Kepner get a, like, a little taste every time? Yeah, he does. Does he get a little something? <laughs> he gets a little... We uh, send him a basket of muffins. Uh -huh. Good. From Donut Stinnett Bowen. Mm. Cause that's a name. Okay. I like when I'm. I like yeah, the. She's, I like a, the, she's a regular. That's Donna. That's uh, Donna Bowen. Oh, that's they, Donna Bowen. I never knew about the Stinnett part. So don't don't. Bow. I wasn't. Right. I'm sorry. I like when they're fast. I like I like just. Moms, Ashley Mills or Jane Kazmarek? Oh, Jane Kazmarek. Kazmarek, how you yeah. say it? Hot Absolutely. dog or hamburger? Hot dog. Shut. Chicago style. Judge, grilled. Judge or Howie? Uh, judge. Root beer or cola? Root beer. Charlie or Marshall Seymour? Uh, oh, well, I mean, Hello? they would be one and the same, wouldn't they? <laughs> they got you. They tried to get you. That's yeah. what happened there. Yeah. Um, uh, how often do you get back to, to Chicago? I get back to Chicago. I used to go all the time, but now that we had kids, I haven't been back. We went, I went this summer. Uh, I, I took, uh, you know, me and my wife took our kids and did a week in Chicago and then did a week um, on the lake in... Uh, Paw Paw, uh, Michigan. Holy crap. Oh, Wisconsin. Nice work. Wisconsin. Uh -huh. No, Michigan. Paw Paw, look it up. Paw Paw. How are we spelling that? P-A-W-P-A-W. Sure. That's got to be Michigan. Yeah. All right, so uh, we went and stayed at this lake house with a bunch of friends. Michigan is Michigan. Nice. Sorry, sorry, Paw Paw. Right. I had a great time. Uh, on Reynolds Lake, and we stayed at this lake house with a bunch of friends, and um, it was had a great, great couple weeks there. So uh, we want to do that again this summer, um, and I, I try to go back there as often as I can. You know, my uh, my sister, uh, I have two brother brother brothers in law. I have two brothers in law there, mm -hmm. uh, and I have um, uh, two a brand new nephew and uh, another niece and nephew who live there. So my kids' cousins. So we try to go back as much as we can. Um, my wife's best friend lives there. Nice. Uh, who's like my second wife, godmother of our kids. So we have, a, I mean, people, we have close, close family there. And um, we try to get there, there as often as we can. But lately it's been like once a year, which is not nearly enough. I want to go more. Uh, daughter is two. Yes, daughter, She's Lily. She's the ballerina. Yes. Lily. Yes, that's right. Daughter, and daughter. She'll be three in May. Oh, boy. She's my real girly girl. Are there more, do we think? We're in discussions. We're in discussions. Uh huh. We're, we talk about it a lot. You know, right? Europe's a great place to make those decisions. <laughs> we did not make a baby in Europe. We made a baby in New York, and then we made a baby here. Uh huh. We but need never... to know where the babies yeah. were made. Huh? We need to know where they. We don't need to know where they were made. Sure just, you do. Oh yeah, New York. <laughs> New York. All right. right here. Well, I tell you, you don't how. need to Time know. Time of day? Do we have a location, apartment, backseat of a taxi cab? I mean, uh, yes. This is too much. Night, <laughs> New York. <laughs> I know exactly when. I know oh, exactly when. I'll I know exactly. That. I'll tell you how. See, when a man and a woman love each other very much, uh, Sam. Tell me more. <laughs> they get real fucked up <laughs> and make lifelong decisions very cavalierly. <laughs> it's all you need to know. Yeah. Um, I'm afraid you can put off your Larry King game only so long, okay. Mister. Yes. Now, now that we're at the 120 minute, we've reached the. Uh, we're coming up on this the two hours very quickly. I didn't think, I didn't think, you're right. You're Tell right. your wife, mm -hmm. all right, that it was not uh, as so painful as she suggested. Well, not to live it, but maybe to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> to live it was very exciting and very calm and natural and very smooth. In fact, when you tell the fellas from Always Sunny yeah. about your experience I'll here, tell them. Please, tell them how much It eat. flies by. <laughs> yeah, and the tweet fives, you can't yeah. get enough. T-fives. <laughs> all right, so let's do our Larry King. Game. Okay, so, so first of all, 
Honest to goodness, thank you. And thanks, Twitter, for hassling you until you... Uh, I, I really do. I had until a great... Until you this caved. Was I mean, I, exactly what I wanted it to be. It was so thoughtful, and it was a great... I really... Very natural and calm. And well, same here. And thanks, J-Mac, once again, for... He does the research to help put together the oh, do yeah. dossier. Yeah, and, and yes, thank you to the There's Twitter always a couple of... Uh, and the, twi the, the, the people from the chat room, as well as the Twitterverse. You guys brought me here. Yeah. Honest to God. I Honest to God, I, I would not have been here if this was... Holy conceit. No, if I reached out, out on my own, you would have said, who's Absolutely calling? Not. No, I'm not, Absolutely not. I'm not going. You get that. Because, you know, if someone calls you on the phone, they don't come with a blue verified check mark. <laughs> but, you know, right. I know it was I knew it was kosher, you know. That's right. People were getting an Albert Brooks shit or yeah. my shit this morning saying, how do you know it's really him? It's not verified. He's been on 10 minutes. Give it well, a minute. Yeah. I, I wish that was in life. If right? everything came with a blue verified check mark, things would be so much easier. You could tell it was him because he tweeted the same thing about eight times. Yes. As his first eight tweets, because he didn't know, he didn't realize what's going on. Yeah. There's no way an imposter would make that mistake. No, no troll makes that error. Uh, so the basic rules for the Larry King game yeah. are are as created by um, our own Jamie Fox. Okay. Uh, it's that <clears throat> moment, it's kind of a bumper that Larry will do before going to the phones. It's a too much information moment. Okay. He'll recall some story that might have happened to him, or he'll share something from that happened at breakfast that morning. Okay. Um, some of the helpful hints that Sam has suggested to people is that if he's going to reminisce, you might even want to go back to the 30s because it's always fun to suggest Larry's 108 years old. Mm. <laughs> so he can remember being on the front line with Patton um, or whatever. So there are no rules beyond that you can take larry to mars if you want that to be what he wants to share but it's larry sharing something mm -hmm. not you you're going to be doing larry so i want a bad larry king impression okay that's i know that takes all the pressure off and that's why it's designed that way all right if it's a good larry king impression i'm a little annoyed not good i'm annoyed by right that. okay yeah. good so as you could tell by mine it has to be bad and then it's that little sharing too much information moment whatever that moment is go anywhere Go anywhere. And then you go to the phones, and if the name of the city is funny sounding, like Papa, it's an extra bonus point. Oh, I should I should I No, no, I, there's I, no shouldas, there's I no preparation. I used, I didn't use, I used that, I used Papa. <laughs> well, think of another one that was near Papa. That is your camera, sir. When you are ready. Sharing, a, sharing some, some information. Just a little, little too much information moment, and then go to the phones. That's pretty much all it is. But you gotta stare down the barrel when you're ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, you want to show us the dark side? Feel well, free. God, there's some dark stories. There are some dark stories. This is oh. a dark story about Larry. All right. Not you. Oh, about Larry. Yeah, absolutely. Jesus, Thank God. I almost... <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam. I try to reiterate it several times. We want this about Larry. It's about yeah. Larry. We, the, the whole idea of the game is to make fun of Larry. Let's mm -hmm. be clear. It's not, not to reveal anything about yourself. So take us to Larry's crazy town, and I really mean go there. But it's definitely Larry, not you. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You're there. That's all we need. I need a city. Uh... <laughs> Somewhere in Illinois. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Too much information. Oh, well. This is not too much information in a dark place, but I was at <laughs> Nate Nell's yesterday, and I ordered a, a matzo brai. <laughs> the Larry King style matzo brai is pancake style well done, but they brought it to me underdone, scrambled, and I didn't like it. Glencoe, Illinois. Nice. <laughs> he went to his birthplace. It's a dramatic place. pause. <laughs> but it's a dramatic pause that brought it all home. <laughs> undercooked? You can't beat that. Come you on. You can't do undercooked matzo. And I've had, I've ordered the Larry King style matzo brai at Nate now, sitting across from Larry King. At the same table? Well, no. <laughs> but if I leaned over, like, <laughs> just, just Larry so. King adjacent? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A good neighborhood. A good neighborhood. Same zip. Yeah. Um, it's egg white matzo brai. Yeah. Little overdone. Sure. Pancake style. It's pretty tasty. A little sour cream. Hello. Nate and Alice. Where we're going. It's great. Let's go. <laughs> Where are we going? I feel like I didn't know that, Kevin. I feel like I'm not leaving that high. I feel like... <laughs> you want a second crack? I would have been better sharing some too much information about myself. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That's why you're wrong, actually. I think it would have been better. That would have been uncomfortable no, for all of us. You're uncomfortable, but the rest of us would have been right. if you had shared something. 
Uh, again, th I can't thank you enough. Honestly. This was very fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, and also kind of perfect in the sense that uh, a complete open book and candid about anything and everything, and then funny without really uh, trying. <laughs> on, 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 no, I mean in terms of jokes or any of that, because some people sometimes feel the pressure to come here and somehow it ends up being shticky and we're like, really? The people who How wrote my just... material would feel very overlooked if that's true, <laughs> because we worked hard on this. <laughs> well, kudos. <laughs> All around. Um, and so now I'll just ask that you sit there uncomfortably yep. for another minute while yep. I wrap this thing up to the fine folks at home who joined us. Wrap it. I want to thank uh, my crew uh, by name once again as I've broken the two-year habit of not mentioning them by name and then utterly forgot that all the people who download the audio-only version who insist the show is much better without having to look at us from the iTunes. So I'll start with uh, our Mike Rotman, our director. And then, of course, here in the room, our Jamie Foxx head writer, our Sam Levine, the kick in the side, hey. our Dr. Kenny Chen, God love him, set director. That's what I'm going to call you. You're the set director. Set decorator? Nope. Okay. He's the director on the set. <laughs> stage manager. We'll say that. Stage yeah, manager. Yeah. That feels Stage manager. Emily Goodwin on sound and elsewhere, and then uh, the J-Mac on uh, research and the producing, and uh, Josh Negrin on the producing and the post-production as well. I thank them all for that. And Samantha Ward did our makeup today, even though... Fred tried to make sure she didn't touch him. Um, and Jamie also on the catering. Thanks again for... Oh, Joe's at Bleecker Street. Hello. Hey. Lovely pie. All right. Speaking of thanks. catering... Uh-oh. Um, Elaine and I... Yes? ...want to invite Fred to our 4th of July barbecue. Aw, <laughs> that's very Bring sweet. The Bring, Bring the, the kids. kids. Bring the family. No, seriously. Is there fireworks? Have... Do you see fireworks? Of course. Uh, yeah, we have t uh, three balconies. Yeah. Where do you live? Uh, Whoa! <laughs> off the air, off the air. Uh, address. <laughs> I, 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 I will get you all the information. Suffice to say, you right have now? you have been invited. All right. <laughs> yes, and I will email no, you. No, but bring the, the kids. People brought their kids last time. There's a pool. Oh, yeah. Nothing. We have a lovely new home. I'll tell you all about it. We kept the right? accidents to a minimum last year too, right? You weren't even there. Uh, let me just also add our '60s <laughs> Mad Men style <laughs> dress <laughs> theme. I was in a white tux jacket. Stuff. New Year's Eve party is one not to be missed either. Just saying, it happened. And there's going to be another one. We'll see. Um, uh, so thank you and Elaine for making that uh, overture. She kind of made you. As it were. Well, of course she kind of made you. <laughs> um, and then in t speaking of the crew that have been outside this uh, studio, you know, every uh, show around this time, I do wonder uh, what the crew has been up to for the last uh, two hours and four minutes. Hmm. If only there were some sort of photographic evidence of what's been taking place. <laughs> Oh, it's a silence! <laughs> 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 <Christmas> flat tire? <laughs> this is fantastic! Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Did they shoot this just now? This is, uh... Quite something. <laughs> 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 Fiend. Wow. Fantastic. Nice. That's impressive. It had a nice little button. A good message. A very nice you know, message. That From was trust definitely, definitely no, a giant He put down the lady. He put down the woman. He was derogatory. And then she... You, you know what I learned Instant karma. Yeah. That I didn't know? What? They filmed that all on Josh's iPhone, and they always look great. They it, filmed it on his phone. Shut it up. was silent, yeah. it was black and white, and it was really grainy. That was all done on the iPhone? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It was an avatar. Wasn't that awesome? It was cute. Wow, from the director. Sorry. Yeah. Less than kudos. <laughs> I'm still upset about my Larry King. All right, there it is. I was trying to be nice for one. I'm uh, thinking of, I'm thinking of, no, you were. You were bending over backwards and Fred set you straight. No, no. It was funny. <laughs> nice message. Lovely message. And shot, by the way, with no budget. Keep that in mind. Yeah. No craft service. Well, that was clear. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's not something you have to disclose. Can I just say, the Grand Slam you wanted to hit in the Larry King, right. you just brought it. All right, great. Yeah. Thanks. You just delivered the runs we were looking for. <laughs> Good. We Good. have won the game. Um, the Cubs win. Cubs win. Cubs win. Yeah, they do. 
Yeah, follow Sam. He tweets that about six times a year. How um, dare you, sir? I know. A pox on your San Francisco Giants, I call. You mean the World Series champion? I'm sorry, that was last season, oh, one of the 2011. Right. Don't! Only a couple days left. <laughs> um, anyway, so thanks very much for everyone uh, for, uh, for joining us this particular outing. Next uh, week, very exciting to say, um, I don't know how much to give away, but uh, rumor has it, uh, Bruce Willis is going to be here. And then after that, we have Peter Weller and Eugene Levy and Rob Reiner. We've got some great shows coming up. We will uh, all yeah, ask you to uh, pose a question for Rob Reiner when he's on that. Oh, week. yes, yes. I will uh, hit you up for a, a, Absolutely. a little inside to. question mm -hmm. for Rob. All right, my thanks uh, again to uh, our, uh, our guest, Fred Savage, and everyone who helped put this particular show together. And uh, I enjoyed the crew gag, contrary to what our guests had to say. I did enjoy it. <laughs> I did enjoy it. I thought it was great. But I've... <laughs> I thought it was great. I'm you you could not, believe it was shot on an iPhone. Yeah, I'm just saying, it's, oh, it's a marvel. It was on an iPhone and done in 10 minutes. It's like, yeah, and I, I saw it. I know. I, I, I mean, it's not, I mean it, was, it was very good, but it's, you know. <laughs> there you have it. All right. Oh, God. God bless us all, everyone. No, this is, this is terrible. Perfect. This is the dichotomy. What's the personality? What personality? <laughs> Which one do you want to represent? There's a on shelf Twitter? life for happy and endearing. Yeah. And it is a minutes. Which you played wonderfully for 124 minutes. We've got to wrap this up. I am going to do a line on this table. <laughs> Let's go. It's coming off the rails. We'll Let's see you go. next time. And as always, get out of my face. He's on. He's scared.